is the whole truth of this case. Johanheim, thank you for the sub. Inner Crescent, thank you for the sub. What's going on here? In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of these last seven long years. What is going on? What? Nothing happens by chance. All is connected. Stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. What? Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. You should be watching this. Ow, 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 ow. What? I was writing about our last case in my journal. Lawyers are supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals. And why now? That case was three months ago. It's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. Right now, I'm wowing the crowd by figuring out how Lemirar disappeared. That's right. Uncle Valent did that illusion too, but you're missing him on TV right now. Jesus Christ, another Valent case. Legendary Grimariers. If Trucy's real father was still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. Okay. Ah, you are here. Working hard or hardly working? Hey, Phoenix. How have you been? Hi there, stranger. Yeah. Ah, how goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Pudding. I love pudding. Oh, it's farm fresh. And not just one pudding, but three pudding. I don't have to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. Ha. How right you are. So you still can't tell us what your mission is? Maybe it is time. It has something to do with you anyway. Maybe you're getting on a top secret mission too. Maybe you could be one of those guys. A spy. Can't I just be a defense attorney? Uh, to be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here. You've heard of the jurist system, yes? Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? Yo! We're getting a trial by a jury of our peers? Holy shit! Oh. Twelve people chosen from the community. Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. Reviving? In context, in Japan, before this case came out, there was controversy about testing it in Japan because it didn't have it! What? Wait, is that real? <laughs> Hold up. 
A lot of yes. Uh, huh. Hmm. Okay. They help analyze the case from different angles. And there will be only six of them under the current proposal, right? Wow, you know your stuff, Apollo. Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully, people will start taking the courts a little more seriously now. Japan, Japanese law has a 99% conviction rate. That's a, not a fair statistic. The cases that make it to court have a high conviction rate. That's true in the U.S. as well. Let me actually see if I can find it. Uh, if measured the same way, the United States conviction rate would be 99.8% chance... Uh, I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show. Dr. Wright, his assistant, Trucy, and his mascot, Apollo. Talk to me about this. What is the secret mission? The Juris system is my mission, more or less. Keep in mind that the new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Oh, we're a defense attorney, so that's pretty good for us, right? In any case, we're going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. We'll take a case as a sample, choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with the process. I'll be chair of the jurist system simulated court committee. The what? The chair constructs the ideal situation... What is going... Is this a computer? Murder. Yep. That's not simple at all! By simple, did you mean that the defendant is... A guilty? Yes. M most likely. So, good luck! With the trial tomorrow. You're defending. Dad was wrong. Epic. Smeepy beeps. Thank you for the nine. What? This is a real trial. You are sending me into a real trial. I guess let's talk about Valent Grimarie for some unknown reason. <laughs> it's three days from now. It's at Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go today. We can say hi to Uncle Valent. Have fun. I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Ah, uh, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow regardless. At... Oh my god. Grimarie, that reminds me. Considered a birthday present, Trucy. But today isn't my birthday. Hmm. Good point. What day is it today, Apollo? It's, it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. And it's a Recycle Your Plastics present. Yippee! So it's plastic. All right, this is these two. So what is it? No. You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Okay. All right, so what case are you going to use? You really want to know, don't you? Yes, we're defending the guy. If all goes well, then yes, of course, this is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without preconceptions. A blank slate, as it were. Well, mine. Committee chair. Okay. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose, I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good! But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. Son of bitch bastard! 
Apollo, if I am in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility, for good or for bad. Just do what you can. And don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Alright. Sure. You can talk to your client, I should hope so. If you can get her to talk. What the fuck does that mean? Alright, let's go to the detention center, I suppose. Oh my god, Jesus Christ, she was here the whole time. Where'd you come from? Well, anyway, please have a seat. Ah, we are defending a gamer girl. Sting L203, thank you for the sub. The return of Mr. Hat. I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. She left. Oh, what? Hi, I'm your defense attorney. Apollo, that was not normal. What's your name? I'm Apollo Justice. And I'm Trucy Wright. Uh, can you tell us what happened? I'm your defense attorney. Anything out of the... Oh, my... oh wow, he is... Trucy, shut up. Could you read this? What is going on here? It's a business card with a name and an address. The name is Vera Misham. The address is for Drew Studio. And you're giving me this card because... And she's gone. Jesus Christ, this is a rough one. All right, here is a studio, and there is a chalk outline on the ground. We did it, dead person. This looks like the studio. Okay, so we've got this one. We've got what appears to be a puffer fish. And a big old peach. Look at this one. Looks half finished. You can still see the rough sketch underneath. But that's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting. Huh. Keep that in mind. All the paintings have a really different style, too. I thought I might find you two here. Yes! Oh. Seems like I run into you two far too often. I'll bet I know why you're here, too. We don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns the studio, Mr. Drew Masham. 
and his daughter was put under arrest. We just saw her at the detention center. It's funny though, she seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit murder. You don't say, not even by poisoning? That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning is a common way to get the job done with the murder as a woman. You want to run that one by me one more time, Emma? What's going on here, Emma? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here with my snackoos. Well, there's the chalk outlaw. Okay, uh, what's this little red thing, huh? Letterbox looks funny sitting inside a room like this. Empty. The other half is connected to the outside of the studio. Mr. Misham would put his letters in there, and the postman took them away. Sure. The tea, maybe? Ah, there's the victim's coffee mug. So the poison was in here. This is my first time seeing a real poisoned mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poisoned coffee? Not exactly, actually. No traces of poison were found in the coffee. You'll have to figure out the rest yourself. I'm officially not on your side, after all. Shut up, Emma! God! You are not... Average murder... <laughs> Emma's statistic of uh, poisoning being a common method of murder by women is wrong. The average murderer poisons zero piece people a year. Dahlia Hawthorne, who poisons 10,000 people a day, is a statistical outlier and should not be counted. There's a fourth painting. Whoa. That's the painting from... What? Huh. Well, that's... Oh, some don't know. It's the guest coffee cup. Where... Where the fuck is the poison? This is a little weird, so it looks like the unfinished part is the swirls that are actually in that hidden painting. Oh, there's more. Oh, son of a bitch. Look at all these paints, Apollo. There's so many. He's got like 20 kinds of red. Oh, what about whatever's going on here? Take a closer look at this desk. Wow, we usually don't get that. Hmm, something about the way that figure is posed. I've seen that pose before. It's you, Apollo. You're making one of your flamboyant gestures. I am a professional. It's pointing towards something. What's this feather thing? Is it a pen? Like an old-fashioned quill pen? But it doesn't have a pointy end. That was for sweeping... Detritus off the desk. <laughs> I 
I love that Apollo's like, Emma, you are such a fucking scammer. Envelope has been opened and resealed. I know how to do that. You take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the steam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. They just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark is from seven years ago. What? Big Bad Man 6, thank you for the sub. Interesting. A journal. He didn't write the name of the killer, did he? It's new. He hadn't written anything. Damn. Would have been lucky. All right, whatever. Uh, let's check out uh, whatever the fuck this is. What is all this equipment here for? It doesn't look very artistic. He had everything from a lathe to a laser cutter. Looks like he was ready to work on metals and wood, too. Though his equipment's a bit old, to tell the truth. Why would a painter need all this? From the dust, I'd say he hadn't used this stuff for years. Do you think I could borrow this? No. Hmm. What about this? Same thing. Is this desk for painting, Apollo? Uh, no. It's a drafting table. Basically, it's a tool for making precise diagrams. Painting is a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, and a computer. I mean, let's, let's open this bitch up. Emma, about this. Oh, th th that! Yes, why, that's a bright red envelope. Someone opened this, didn't they? My lip... What? Sure. I read it, after all. borrow this the victim so this uh, drew Misham was some kind of artist apparently did a lot of illustrations for books I hear had a lot of female fans too for what it's worth That wasn't one of his illustrations. Hmm. He was an odd bird, Misham. Hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. What do you mean? He was always locked up in here in this studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was through letters he'd put in that letterbox there. Wow. And yet he had a kid. Couldn't stand technology. He has a computer. took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Misham's and Vera's, basically. Oh, so she has to be the killer. Yeah. Interesting. 
Let's talk about Vera. So this woman, Vera, she's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? Yeah, a real sickly girl. Hardly ever went outside. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. Her good luck charm. She has a charm that gives her the courage to go outside. Hmm. Last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. Mysterious painters who never go outside make, don't make for good articles, and it happened that he died the night of his first interview. At around 9 every night, Vera made him a cup of coffee. 9 p.m. Drank his usual coffee and became violently ill and died. She poisoned him on the night of his interview. He wasn't near Mr. Misham when she brought her father's coffee. Why is she the suspect? The reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Hmm. Okay, so the poison is on the rim. Is that what I'm seeing? Yes. Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue residue on the rim. Ah, that, that. Yes, well, it's it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. Oh, shut up. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. Uh, that That is poison. It's not a hobby. So what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? This spray, and that's what it turns blue when it touches poison. So the poison that killed the victim was on the mug. That's right, see? It wasn't in the coffee. It was applied to the rim of the mug itself. Yes, yes, yes. Emma, you're so pretty, and your snacks are so nice, and I just really love forensic science. Ah, you know me too well. Okay. Okay, meaning, can we get scientific help now? Oh, I suppose. Bring me anything you find suspicious. All right, cool. Well, uh, here we go. I got something suspicious right now. What the fuck is this? About that envelope we found, I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an x-ray analyzer. It's called a pegging machine. That's right, at least that's what I call it. It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. It's the x-ray spectralization. Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? Okay. <laughs> That's right, you're sharp, Trucy, but it's a bit more complicated than that. In practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Alright, let's fuck around with it. <sighs> no, no, no. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's use it on the fucking... I have a lottery ticket here. You set the sample in the device like so. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of an envelope. 
Got it set to display the outside of the envelope now, see? Uh, actually, it's uh, quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn the dial for me. Okay. DS feature. That's how you choose what depth you want to scan. And then you can read the letters on the ticket. Cool, except I can't read them. Just turn the dial a little more. What you have to understand is that a sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see the paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Uh, this x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of 0 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down into thin layers, so it can only show what's written on that layer. That's why we go on to step two. Try rubbing the image a bit, if you would. DS feature... That fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial again just a little. Good, now you can rub this image to fix it too. All right. Zero, zero, four, nine, you lose. Oh, well, fuck you two. This sucks. I really dislike this one. Okay, let's print this out. Epic. At least you know where you stand, eh? Anyway, now you see the true hidden power of my weapon. Now let's try it out on the real thing. Okay. Mr. Drew Misham, I've deposited the $100,000 in the designated account. Please send receipt once you've confirmed the transfer. Hmm. Seven years ago. Great, there's a second page. Gotta keep doing this stupid fucking thing. Getting good at it, though. Sign the papers and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within seven days. I need not remind you to speak of this to no one. So it was a letter about payment for one of his paintings. Why all the secrecy and why was this letter the only one in here? Hmm. All right, let's, let's schmoove. Yes! Piss Wizard returns!
Well, Miss Trucy, how does the day find you? Uh, good. If you've come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck and congratulations on your big magic show. <clears throat> okay, you're great. The world will watch in wonderment as Magnifica. Uh, everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true the Grammarie miracle is back after a seven-year absence? Miss Trucy, I must apologize. This show should have been his. Yeah. My co-magician in training, Zach. If that terrible thing hadn't. It's okay. Your father was a great magician. If you were alive, then I would have been proud to stand upon the stage as his assistant. Thank you. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. To think we get to see the great Magnifique's illusions again. Wow. I hope that he's not a bad guy. My mentor, the magnificent Magnifique Grammarier, was a true deity among magicians, a creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that... I was so little when I saw the last one, but I remember his shows. He did wheelies in a sports car through the air above the audience, and then sped off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that that memory was a little embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. As heir to the Grammarier troops' secrets, it falls to me to provide one. It is my God-given destiny. Uh, if the world was waiting, why'd you hold off for seven years? Oh. Perhaps you've heard of the magic known as Law, which governs our land. I have. The performance of Magnifique's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it. What? Performance rights. Magnifique's magic relies on an incredibly innovative idea. The trick was considered his property. It's a fucking IP case? Intellectual property. Well, you know, there it is. Magnifique knew this and bequeathed it in his will. I knew it! Probate is at the cause of all things. To one person. Uh, he bequeathed it to Zack, right? Yeah. Fuck. And then Zack died without a will. <laughs> the certain period is seven years. Wait, so hold up. In... How did he bequeath this trick to him? Because it feels like if Trucy's the kid, it would pass to her, right? I haven't taken any probate, but I took property law, right? I feel like if you die intestate, doesn't... Don't they just, like, try their hardest? Wouldn't it go to Trucy? I feel like. Yes, Miss Trucy. Though it pains me to say it. Uh, this past spring, April was the time. Your father was declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty mentor passed to me. That doesn't- it doesn't sound like they should! Oh, never mind. Okay. Is that how it works? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's called death in abstentia. Oh, yeah, I think they're asking about- <laughs> I think they're asking about the IP. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then he's not a fucker. That's, that makes sense. Wow, I didn't know that, uh, that Valent was, like, the backup guy, though. That potentially matters. Blue Badger, Blue Badger. Okay, that's gross. You know, I thought this at the time of the Kaviner's concert, too, but this Colosseum is just way too big. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Would you like to hear what the grand finale of the show in three days will be? Yes.
How is he going to make it disappear? That shit's huge. A balloon! Yeah. <clears throat> I've spent plenty of time and a pretty penny on promotion. I hope it's a huge success, Uncle Valent. Oh, I intend for it to be nothing less, I assure you. It sounds like a big deal. It's going to make the fucking thing disappear. Hey, what do you know about this fucking thing? <gasps> oh, no. What if this is the will? Hmm. Trucy, where did you get this? Daddy gave it to me? Your daddy? My part? No, 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 no. Uh, 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 Phoenix. Why now? The signature upon the back, do you recognize it? It belongs to none other than Zach Gramarye. Daddy signed this? Why'd it be so bold as to open it? I'm sorry, I can't let you do that. Ah, uh, This is 100% a will. This is, this is what's pushing me to probate, is that there is not a single power on Earth like the strength of a will. It really will evoke that... <laughs> that reaction. Holy fuck. Let's, um, let's go talk to, uh... To what's-her-name? I was wondering if you could take a look at this. How do you feel about putting this under the x-ray? Okay, fuck you. <laughs> Is it like the pro state? Yes. Ace Attorney Memento. I sniffed one out. She's in the medical office. She's just lying down. Said she didn't feel so well. I can't allow any meetings at the moment. Most annoying client ever. Thank you, asshole. <clears throat> oh, we can't go even further. Uh, how do you feel about... The tickets! A challenge, is it? What? No, 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 no. Ever feel like the paintings? It's... it's nope, no. Nope. Uh, let's examine the back. We didn't really examine too much. It's the big ass Colosseum. Okay, I'm not actually seeing anything else I can examine here. They've changed the sign since our last case. It was all Gaviners back then, wasn't it? I hope nothing bizarre and mysterious happens this time, but it shall! Oh my god. I don't have a problem with mystery as long as it's legal. Yeah, we gotta go. Does the person at the bottom right look familiar? Who? This one? No. Bottom right. This person? It's Larry? No shot. <laughs> People think it's Larry. Alright, sure. Or Loris. Alright, well, whatever. Uh, I feel like I probably should present something to him, but I don't know what. How do you feel about this death coffee? Nope. How about... Oh, we... You know this? 
I don't really want to talk to... Maybe chat him? We already chatted him. Chatting. I feel like... I really just don't want to show Emma anything. Uh, do you want to go with me to the magic show? Let me just show you this. Now look at this one. It's the same fucking one. I was hoping you wouldn't find that. You're right, though. Drew Misham was copying this painting. Why would he do that? Is she gonna tell me? She is not. She is not going to tell me. Now you! I got something for you. Ah, presenting, are we? <laughs> oh, daddy. I did my fair share of that back in the day. Showed my attorney's badge a lot, too. He may look cool and calm now, but you should have seen him before. <laughs> you know me too well, Jersey. <laughs> hey, so what's up with this Lord Daddy thing? All right, we don't get to ask him about it. Um. Hmm. Well, shit. This is not an AA moment. This is an MBT moment. Am I missing something? So this, there's some dialogue here, but. Sure, whatever. Huh? I feel like I have done enough with regards to Emma. Okay, what could he want? How do you feel about this copied painting? Yeah, you don't give a fuck about it. How do you feel about this red envelope? Yeah, I also do not give a fuck about it. How do you feel about this letter box? 100%. How do you feel about Vera's card? Oh, you know what we haven't done very much of? He's checking. Check the other one, huh? What a pretty business card. On the back, hmm, just her name. That seems odd to me. Why write your name on the front and back of the card? Why not use the space on the back for a self-portrait?
Well, what do we have here? Looks like a person thinking about something. Maybe they're worried? You know, I've always wondered about that. Why is there supper and dinner? Are they different meals or the same thing? Sure. Nothing on the back. I keep waiting for something crazy to be on the back. This is a nice puffer fish. That's clearly a porcupine fish. Uh, there's no such thing as a porcupine fish. Yet. Hoping something would be on the hidden painting at least. Oh, we can examine the big peach. This painting, I know it. Really? It's that story where the old woman is doing the wash in the river, and this giant peach comes a floating on down. Wait. I guess it is. It does kind of look like that. Well, don't know what I expected. Ah, looky here, a handwritten signature. It says, I can't read it. All right, well, we've checked everything. How do you feel about the peach floating down the river? How do you feel about the landscape? How do you feel about the coffee mug? How do you feel about we've done everything else. Okay. Well, I guess we gotta present something to Phoenix. Uh, Mr. Wright, how do you feel about this? Have some coffee. Have some puffer fish. Have this picture of Vera's card. Have some portrait. Have uh, the red envelope. Have the letter box. Wait, what the fuck? Huh? I've done everything! What, do they want me to fucking examine the detention center? I know everything in here. We've already looked at it all. Well, that was... Really all that I had a guess for. All right, chat, it, what, what am I missing? Who am I supposed to talk to? That's what I'll say. Emma. What the fuck? I've shown her everything. I've showed her literally everything.
you're missing something in the studio. Okay. Did you check the small frame on the desk? No. But I don't think that that's it. It doesn't really work that way. I just assumed the examine was for the journal that's right next to it. Okay, well that, that didn't do anything. Thanks chat. There's no new talk. You need to present something you've already presented because something changed. It would have to be the hidden painting, right? No, it's not this. Okay, uh, what about the red envelope? But oh, we just did the x-ray detection. Right, sorry. The grammar yay envelope? No. Now that we know what this is, this one? I need a new a good reason. I don't have one. Yeah, I got to call it for today. I'm sorry, chat. Whatever this is, I don't have the brain cells uh, remaining. Show me something that looks suspicious. The new one. Yeah. Now I want to examine the old one. That's my reason! Take some of this, Emma. I have to fly. What?! There's no way. Oh my fucking god. Oh lord almighty.
What? That's the entire apartment. You need to zoom in? How do I zoom in? You're spraying water. You have to back out and click the table. You're supposed to fail. You're supposed to fail. Oh! I'm gonna cry. Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna cry. This is the best designed case in Ace Attorney history. <sighs> oh, would you look at that? Nice going, Trucy. I'm known to work magic. Mmm. Russell. Interesting. Okay. Okay, do you know about Brushel? Oh good, we gotta talk. A man by that name called on me just now. Just now? Valance's vision is always toward tomorrow. His footstep is- Okay, come on. That is all. That's not helpful. I am to perform a big magic show. Yes, I wanted someone to cover it. Yet he had ears only for that incident. In any case, I requested that the rapacious reporter remove himself. So a painter has died. What of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of Grammarie. Do you know where he went? Uh, I recommended he visit the detention center. He would tear apart my respectability. I will tear him apart. All right, here we go. That's it. That's the whole trick. What happened to the big magic? <laughs> Is it not more miraculous for it to stay ripped? Okay, wow, he really hated that guy. Now, the time has come when I must return to make my presti- Okay, sure. Sure. I love him. 
Whoa, what is on with his nose? That's not true. What, what's he writing? Are you a reporter? Wow, you're Trucy. Uh, okay. Why is he blinking upside down? <clears throat> Interview? This guy sucks. <laughs> What a pickle. Ah, I see. Name's Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. And he brushes his hair with the toothbrush. All right, so where we last left off, we had just met this freak who is going to, I guess, be a journalist. Let's talk to him. Spark Brushel, is it? So, Mr. Brushel, you're a journalist? Ah, l let me stay one thing for the record here. I'm the interviewer. I'm the one asking questions here, end quote. Okay. You think a movie director watches movies? Uh, Yes. Exactly, I knew you'd understand. The night of the crime? Uh, you were at Drew Studio? Who, me? Look, let me stay one thing for the record. I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy, all on the road. Journalist always buys one-way ticket, never looks back. End quote. Uh, okay. You want to know the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. All because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. Yeah. This guy sucks. I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? Why do the interview in the first place? Uh, yes. Look, it's like, uh, oh, I've got it. Say there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy's gonna tell me where he got it? At the supermarket? Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. That's interesting. Huh. You wouldn't have happened to me this one, would you? Okay, maybe the other one. Okay, he doesn't know anything. Okay, how about... Shit, I don't know. Uh, I don't really have anything else to show him. I'm gonna be honest. See ya. Now, at least we got his theme out of here. Do -do 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 -do. Ace Attorney Momento. Hey, Emma. Well, how'd it go? Did you find anything out? Uh, no, pr pretty much we found nothing out. Uh, 
I guess we'll ask about the painting. Uh, this painting came from behind that dresser. Yeah, it was stolen. Uh, also, yes. I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Uh, do you think you could tell us a little bit about it? I suppose. Hey, it's what you think Drew Misham was a forger. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Copies of an original. Exact copies. So precise you couldn't tell them apart. Uh-oh. I have buttered her to death. <clears throat> All right, let's let's go. Oh, fine. Just this time though. All right, let's go. Got it. The Nintendo DS is in flames. Nintendo DS exploding. Immeasurable damage to surrounding property. Flames climbing high into the night. Okay. This is big. DS in shambles. 3DS released right now. To compensate. Whoa. This is a completely different painting. He really blows! <laughs> uh, that's what they're saying about me! Well, in the past, you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. In other words, the traces of charcoal. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch, but not what it looked like. Okay. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what it was. Okay, some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely, then do a completely new painting on top of that. Huh. Weird. Let's check out the others. Okay, this is the puffer fish one. So this one is this one is uh, the fishy one. Okay, this isn't looking like a fish. This ain't looking like no fish. I ain't seeing no fish here. This is a completely different painting again. What the fuck is going on? All right. Now at least this one will look like the other one because we we can see the rough sketch looks like the uh, the actual finished product 
right, so here comes the, uh... Here comes the peach. Here comes the peach. Anytime now, here comes the peach. Here comes the... What the fuck? A completely different painting again. This is... What the fuck? That's... Gavin. Are these all our cases? This is the first case. This is the second one. It's the noodle cart. And this is the... Th what the fuck? <laughs> this is the poker room murder. This is the noodle cart. And this is the... This is Gavin on fire. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, tell me we are going to court right now. Tell me we are going to court right the fuck now. Oh my god. Oh no. Well, I don't know what you want us to do. Uh, you doing all right, Vera? Nope. <laughs> so you're Vera. I'm Trucy. Trucy, right. That's right with a W, but not right, right? Okay. We're uh, on your side. You can tell us anything. Good morning. Okay, we're getting there. Not bad, not bad. Think you'd do better with a little smile, you know? You're so pretty. You need to sell yourself. Trucy, let's uh shut the fuck up here. Thank you for taking my case. Alright, okay, we can work with this. Here is the hand. She took it away. Want to try? The victim, Drew Misham, was a forger, and a stolen painting was found in his studio. A life of crime, really. And maybe one that led to his death. And now we are in court. Alright, I'm gonna go get some food. we got here well it's clavier well we will now <clears throat> begin the uh trial of huh what's going on here
What? Oh, right, because this is the, uh, the new legal system trial. Juris, today, uh, judge today's trial coolly. <laughs> Christ. The jurists are unbound by the letter of the law. They don't affect the trial with evidence, but by their feelings. We're about to find out just what effect they're going to have. Oh, stop shit-talking trial by jury. His coffee was poisoned. By whom, you ask? By none other than the defendant, Vera Misham. Objection! That's his daughter, asshole. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee. It was on the mug. We're already having to correct him. He's in the fucking opening statement and he's lying. Okay. According to this report, the victim's death was caused by atroquinine chemical compound that does not occur naturally. Lethal dosage is a mere 0 0.0002 milligrams. What is that, like a pound? Alright. Is this the new Albaz? Yeah, it is, yeah. A man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. What? It's Brushel? Wow, this guy sucks. I'll tell you this, Phoenix did his homework. We could not have asked for a less sympathetic witness. Thank you, God. Yup. So you're not here to get famous, are you? Uh, sorry, I am exactly here to get famous. Hey, Joe Biden, nice to see ya. <laughs> stupid. All right, you dumb fucking stupid idiot. Explain to me. I visited the studio around night to do the interview. First outsider to enter the atelier. Oh, say that right. His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. I just noticed this. What the fuck is going on with his hair? What's going on there? And you know what happened next? Star falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Well, then you didn't really witness the murder, did you? You just witnessed the lack of other people. Well, you, ne you didn't even see inside the thing. Need I remind you, cameras are rolling today. I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. You didn't do it, did you? You mean to think like that? Come on, that's like newsmaker making the news, end quote. Or even contemporary witch hunt, end quote. Wild accusations rock courtroom, end quote. <laughs> rock indeed. Okay. Well, Mr. Justice, your cross-examination, please. All right, let's uh, beat this guy to death. <laughs> Brushel is a good guy, Sag. No bully. He just looks like shit. Well, I can sympathize with that. Nine o'clock at night? It seems late for an interview. If the great painter Drew Misham says come at nine, believe you me, I go at nine. Okay. The first outsider to enter the atelier. All right. What, um... 
a basically insignificant step for all mankind, but a giant step for that brush -o guy. <laughs> all right, I like him again. If no one on the outside ever had access to the studio, and then it would serve to reason that the deed was done by an insider. Or someone came in and they didn't know about it, right? How did this epoch-making interview go? His daughter brought us coffee. Oh, he was in there. Shit. Would you mind being a little more specific? Ooh-wee! Let me tell you, I enjoy a cuppa. In fact, it all began when I was in third grade. No, wait, fourth grade. And not about the coffee, you dingle dork. This coffee, did anyone other than the defendant touch it? Yes. Well, now, if you've got a question to ask, you better straight up ask it. That's what I t Oh, my God. The new recruits, he's a freelance. Right for a grade schooler. That's my motto. That's actually true. Um, a quick fact. Um, uh, one of the things that... Uh, one of the fun little dealios that you can do on computers is uh, you can get the grade level of your writing and you kind of want it to be as low as possible because <laughs> like why would you try and write like a fucking ridiculous redditor in um, like junior year of high school no one's going to understand that you actually especially in America where we're all dumb as shit who touched the coffee I don't know I was in the back oh so you didn't see anything What's this about a star falling? That's a journalism code word. An important personage passes away. Thank you, Trucy. Let's do moment of death. I would like to hear about this. About when Mr. Mission passed away, what a scene that was. He puts his coffee mug down with a crash. Then he dies. I was surprised. He hit the floor. He had a seizure. Paralyzes the central nervous system. The body arches back like a bow. The limbs tremble. The throat burns. Jesus Christ. All right, calm down. Oh, right. Hold up. Do we have the Gaviner's super fan? I have, honestly, I did not like that, that testimony at all. Mr. Brushel's story really did not tell us anything we didn't already know. For sure? Sure, I'm sure. Fuck. What if they had been hiding in there from before? Even if someone had been hiding in the studio, they hardly could have poisoned that mug without anyone noticing. Shit. Okay, let's try one of those other ones. Okay, so the death was not helpful. Let's try... The star's coffee. You say Mr. Misham had the coffee too, but do you actually see him drink it? Of course. Fuck. He really ha he really has everything. Actually, he doesn't. Actually, this is extremely important. He had one so-called sip, if that. Puts lips to mug drinks? I well, don't... Interesting. I 
imagine this is important. The victim drank his coffee, then immediately fell over? Yes. Your Honor, this is a vital piece of information. Please add it to the testimony. Sure. Let's see if we can try that third one, or if it's too if it's gone now. Oh, it is gone. All right, well we made the right choice at least. So this has got to be the statement. So he either took a sip or he didn't, and then he fell over. Oh yes, just like that. Well, if he didn't. Let's try his coffee. So you drank the coffee that Vera served you too. Of course. But you're still alive. You know the poison was on the rim of the coffee. Oh yes. There were two cups on the tray she brought, and one of the cups had Drew's signature painted on the side. No chance the guest would take that one by mistake. Well, what are we supposed to do about this? I drank the coffee too, but I'm not dead. Yeah, you, you wouldn't accidentally take this one. Wow, this is already super difficult. Let's try the, the moment of death. You're sure you drank the coffee? Yes, 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 yes. Do moment of death. It's just not helpful stuff. That was definitely death by poison. Well, that's not helpful. Oh. That is death by poison. Is there anything remotely interesting in this? Between 9 and 9.30. Okay, so what do we know about Brushel? We saw him die. Despite that sounding important, there's nothing interesting in there. He didn't see if he took a sip or not. And he 
also drank the coffee. Here's a weird question. Why? Why wouldn't he drink something? Man, I am just super lost on this one. This is so hard. No. I think this is the one. I like this one. But I don't know what to present. Oh, shut up. Not this. Not this thing. Drank the coffee, but I'm not dead yet. Do the Ace Attorney classic backwards think? What do you mean by that? If your client is innocent, then there's something wrong. Okay. What about... Objection! I don't know why I thought that would do anything. I'm just clicking stuff. Let's let's actually think. Okay. So The real question is why would he continue to drink the coffee, right? He drank the coffee after the guy had a spasm. He legit was like Damn, that's crazy. But why would he do that? Got it. <clears throat> I live in a man sees dog eat dog and writes about a world. <laughs> nice. In 
one sip and then he died. Yep, got it. The victim had one sip, if that. The next moment, he was on the floor. Are you sure? Because uh, atroquinine is a slow-acting poison. Why are you using me as an example? Unfortunately, we weren't told everything. There was a vital omission in Gavin's information. Hmm? An omission? Atroquining is as violent as he says, but death doesn't come upon ingestion, not immediately. That's because atroquinine is a slow-acting poison. According to one forensic scientist, it's one of the most violent poisons, but is absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. Damn, I completely forgot about this. It takes 15 minutes for the adverse effects to show. If we suppose that the moment Mr. Misham uh, sipped the coffee was when he sealed his fate, then he would have had time to enjoy his last cup of joe. What's the meaning of this? Is what If what the defense says is correct, why that contradicts the entire testimony we've just heard? Well, Mr. Brushel? Anything to say on the record? Well, it's virulent, all right. Even then, it had already begun digging its claws into the journalist. He's working on a scoop. Objection! Hey, asshole, answer the question. It's Brushel, yeah? Hey, Brushel. Let's take a trip back down memory lane. Huh? Did the victim really die the instant he took a sip? Think it over. This is vital. You know what I think? I think that was a not-so-subliminal suggestion. End quote. Wow. All right. <laughs> okay, Brushel, I talked some shit on you, but here you are uh, objecting to your own <laughs> prosecutor. Uh, actually, sir, uh, you're leading me. Uh, huh, yes. I admit it does cause a problem if he died when you say he did. I would be forced to say Auf Wiedersehen to my simple case, and you would be forced to say farewell to your article. Come again? You can't write a story based on conjecture, can you? And as the case drags on, other reporters will pick up the scent, and you'll be forced to kiss your exclusive scoop goodbye. Oh, look, wait, just wait a second, just one second. I think I just recalled a so-called important detail. The, okay, well, this is where the jury system is going to come in handy because he is clearly just literally telling him what to say. Attorney utterly confused, end quote. Actually, I did notice something when I visited the studio. Oh, it's... It's actually... Huh. Okay, I like this guy again. Okay. As far as I can tell, the witness is standing by his testimony that Mr. Misham died the instant after he drank. Of course I'm standing by my testimony. And my dream of exclusive rights to the story. Ah, I suppose it was too much to hope for. What was? Of course he wouldn't choose a simple case, not him. Him? Phoenix Wright, who else? <laughs> well, ah, Chung Hairbrush, I'll report for us if you would. What is it that you noticed? Right, let's see what we got. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. I thought nothing of it at the time. Now that I think about it, what if he was writing a suicide note? Oh! You know what, Brushel? That is exactly what happened. That's right. Not guilty of murder. He had this look on his face. Man's face inscrutable as a quadratic equation, end quote. Suicide. Poor Mr. Misham, but that means Vera's innocent. What Brushel noticed. When I arrived at the studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. 
was there anyone at the studio other than Mr. Misham? Well, his daughter. Was anyone else at his studio? No. Not a cat, not a rat, not even a mouse. Brahms then phenomenon. Okay, so that's the one we present on. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he's sealed beyond. <laughs> Yellow envelope. Hmm. Well, it's not the red one. Yeah, put it in the testimony. There's a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. Well, we can show him that he's wrong there. I thought nothing of it at the time, of course. All right, let, let's just let's just let's just speed this through. Are you dumb idiot? As it just so happens, there was a letter in a desk drawer at the scene. In a red envelope. Oh! <laughs> Prosecutor Gavin. Was a yellow envelope found at the scene of the crime? Unfortunately, no. Uh, but her forehead, it's easy to mistake the color of an envelope. I guess. But not this envelope. You see, it was postmarked already, seven years ago. Uh, I can explain that. Drew wanted to get that letter in an envelope pronto. Get it out of sight of my beady eyes, right? So he grabbed the nearest envelope and crammed it away. Okay. Absolutely not. It's resealed. It's clearly open. With the assistance of a forensic scientist. Uh, what? Note that this letter is addressed to Drew Misham. Why would he address a letter to himself? Let alone send a suicide note to himself. I've been scooped! Like in Five Nights at Freddy's 6. Mr. Brushel, can you explain this to the court? Ah, how could I have forgotten? I suppose this happens to the best of us. Well, that's the thing. See, after he put the letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. A stamp. A so-called postage stamp. Stamp. Well, to mail his letter, what else? And I saw him put it in the letter box. It was yellow, and he put it in the box. Oh, how I wish it did. That said, it makes me wonder about the contents of the red envelope. $100,000 is quite a good deal of money. So this was from seven years ago, yeah? Is he just leaving? <laughs> He's a sniffer! <laughs> Attorney has active imagination, little else. End quote. Even I noticed something, and my eyes aren't what they used to be. You know, I'm starting to understand what this perceiving stuff is about. Yeah. Please continue with your testimony. Tell us about the scent of a story. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. What's with his nose? It turns pink. What's with his nose? 
took a bit of work to get that interview. Leverage's story gets his interview. The story concerned a certain case. Oh my god! Well, he knows everything. <laughs> He blackmailed. But yes. I mean, no, 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 no. It wasn't exactly blab. Look, this is my story, my tidbit. While you have me chatting away in here, what's going on out there? What if some Wally Woodsworth or Sally Scooper gets wind of my story? See what we got. Ooh. Bracelet, bracelet reacting, bracelet reacting. The victim, Drew Misham, had an aversion to reporters. Boy, I guess, not even my considerable charm did much for him until I got my thumbs up. Maybe you can elaborate. What's going on here, buddy? Exactly what sort of story was this? A little one, like I said, nothing more, nothing less, nothing in between. I might have suggested I had a lead on this particular story. Hmm. What case? Unfortunate. This is not true. We know he's a forger. He's a he's a star, man. What is going on? All right, so let's um let's check out that last statement. So this is the perceived, for sure. Here we go. Say what you will. But Drew's talent is Where's his other hand? I can't even see it. Let's check say what you will. going on in the pocket here. Pen, hair, brush, hand. Okay. But Drew's talent Oh, jeez. Come on. Nothing. Oh, disgusting. Oh, that's so gross. That it's actually armpit. <sighs> Regrettably, gotcha. So what much, Mr. Brushel? Yeah, well, a man can't help his glands, you know. It's more than that. When Mr. Misham's talent was mentioned, you suddenly began to sweat buckets. You're hiding something about his talent. What? 
what? That's ridiculous. Let's show where Mr. Misham's true talent lay. It just so happens I have evidence showing the talent mentioned in the letter. I'm talking about the unfinished painting. Let's try the finished painting. Stupid. This painting was found in Mr. Misham's studio. There are two problems with this painting. The first is that it wasn't painted by Mr. Misham. The second is that there was another painting in the studio which apparently doesn't count for this one, which looked exactly like it, except it was only half done. Then we have a letter discussing a payment of $100,000, which suggests a certain business operation. The business of making forgeries. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. That is all, Your Honor. Everyone, please, everybody. Can we keep this private, please? This is my story, my scoop. Forgery. It's a serious crime. Drew Masham is known as an artist these days, but there were rumors he dabbled in another kind of art until a few years back. Drew Misham was a talented, was talented, all right, talented at making precise, detailed fakes. In fact, those certain criminal elements were quick to discover. Exactly. I'm talking about forging evidence. <gasps> this is the guy. Oh my God. It's the guy. for forged evidence. Wow. So the victim had ties to the criminal world, right? He could have had plenty of enemies we know nothing about. Oh, this is my first time hearing of this criminal world. We found no criminal connections when we conducted our investigation. Yeah, no duh, dude, it's his job. How do you explain the money? Uh, there is no proof tying this letter to our case. Our case was, and remains, simple from the beginning. Only the defendant could have poisoned that mug that night. And you, of course... Mr. Brushel, your testimony to this point has been quite unreliable. It doesn't speak well of your reporting acumen. What are you talking about? My journalism is rock solid. So solid you could stand an elephant on it. In any case... Let's hear a recap of your testimony. If we can ascertain the situation in that studio from the recap, the trial is over. Okay, here we go. It's okay, we'll get him. Yeah, 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 yeah! that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug, and nothing left that studio after he died. Clearly the only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter. Or was it? I actually know it out, out, of, out of the bat. I have one trump card left to play. Let's go. K Kona. I love his his agony sprite. No, no, no. We got it. I know what killed him. I just have to figure out where to present it. Oh, 
I think it's this one. Not one thing, you're sure? Yep, sure as can be. Well, with one exception. Spark brush. <laughs> Come on! Uh. Yes, I do, Your Honor. Not Vera. All right, this thing wasn't at the scene of the crime, so I can't show it to you. But I do have evidence that shows how it could have been taken from the scene. The letterbox? So oh, I'm thinking about the tiny frame. But theoretically, the letterbox is the way that it could have been out. What did Mr. Brushel just tell us? When he entered the studio on the night of the murder, the victim had just finished writing a letter. Yeah, I said that, and yeah, it was true. You went on to tell us that he put the letter in a yellow envelope and put it in the letterbox. The tiny frame is for a postage stamp. But that very same letterbox was empty. In other words, that night the yellow envelope disappeared. Ah, uh, yes, intriguing. So an envelope has disappeared from the scene of the crime. Of course, this changes nothing. Huh? He has a point, Mr. Justice. What we're trying to figure out here is how the poison got into Mr. Misham. Is it important that the envelope the witness says he saw disappeared? Well, if it did disappear, then something did leave the studio that night. That seems very important to me. Very well, then. The witness will add this to his testimony. You got it! <laughs> Nothing could be more serious than an envelope disappearing from the studio, and if you were hiding that fact from us. Uh, yeah, well, actually. Hmm. But here, forehead, isn't there a much more serious question before us? This is the one for sure. I hope it I hope it works on this uh on this testimony. We'll we'll see. Objection! Nope. Got to be on the new testimony. Objection! What? On this testimony. Objection! What? Objection! Uh oh. Am I wrong? The only other person in the studio was the defendant. Vera poured the coffee. That's okay. We're past the coffee being the murder weapon. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was the mug. And you're sure about that? Well, to be really, really precise, I was busy gobbling even candies. One of those candies might have been poison. No fresh fragrance of mint filled the room. No mint residue was found. Yes, I think he licked a postage stamp.
I can prove it. I can easily prove this. This is the easiest proof of my life. Proof, not possibilities, of course. And Prosecutor Gavin, I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you the proof. What did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. I saw him writing a letter, I did, which was picked up by the mailman, I assume, of course, which means it had a postage stamp. Oh. As we all know, stamps come with dried glue on the back. He died the same way that George's wife died in Seinfeld. In order to use the glue, you have to wet it by licking the stamp. Objection! Heh, <laughs> no one worth talking to actually lick stamps in this day and age. This man is two million years old. Objection! Okay, so he licked the stamp. But wait, how does that explain the atroquinine on the rim of the coffee mug? It was put as a red herring. If he licked the back of a poisoned stamp, the poison would get on his tongue, which would show up on the mug. Okay, I'm in. Those traces on the mug weren't the killer's doing. It was the other way around. The coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Misham. Mr. Misham poisoned the coffee mug himself. Okay. All right. I'm in. But that doesn't... Recall, if you would, atroquinine is a slow-acting poison. Poison entered his body when he put the stamp on the envelope uh, 15 minutes before because that stupid asshole jammed it in. But his time wasn't up until the moment he touched his lips to the cup of joe. I like this a lot. He's going to ask for proof and I'm going to own him. He's sniffing. Uh-oh. As I believe I mentioned earlier... After he put the letter in the envelope, he sat there searching his desk drawer for something. A stamp. A so-called postage stamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I don't seem to remember him finding one. Fuck. Oh, that was so good otherwise. Ah ha 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 ha. Good show, good show. You can't even prove there was a stamp at the scene. No, I cannot. Let's hear what the defense has to say. Anyway. Where's your evidence that proves the existence of a poisoned stamp? This I actually do have. It's the tiny frame. It was on the victim's desk, Your Honor. Quite empty, as you can see for yourself. I noticed that too during my inspection. So what? Ah, apparently you weren't as observant as you should have been. You see, when you saw this frame, it was missing something quite important. Yes, a pale bluish stain on the inside of the frame. Atroquinine residue. How wasn't I told about this? I don't know. <laughs> the frame is two inches square. The face of the frame is even smaller, an inch wide at most. You aren't saying. Well, we knew he liked stamps. Oh, but I am. Tell me, what fits in such a small frame? A commemorative stamp, perhaps? Order, order, order. The poison stamp was in this frame. Impossible. Prosecutor got it's very possible. Why would he put something like that on his stamp? He had it there so he could commit suicide if the mood struck. Maybe it was a normal stamp that someone had poisoned. You know, can I say something? I had a thought, see? Please stop. The victim was a forger. There's a lot of money in that line of work. So the poison stamp might have been a murder weapon aimed at him. Oh, Rich. That's Rich. Leave the ridiculous flights of fancy to the Gaviner's song lyrics, please. Okay. The stamp was a murder weapon? Nonsense. Murder is a simple business. Who would go to such lengths? No one. Well, someone who doesn't want to get caught. I disagree. Recall, if you would, the victim's reclusive lifestyle. Drew Misham hid from the world. He avoided meetings. His only contact with the outside world was the mail. Now, if you wanted to kill someone you couldn't meet, but you knew red letters, a stamp would be the perfect weapon. Ridiculous! Where's your proof? I want proof. Show us evidence the poison stamp was sent to him as a murder weapon. We don't have that. I think I know what happened. I don't believe it, but I can see it. I think I know how Mr. Misham was killed. Fill us in. 
A certain piece of evidence points to the truth, Your Honor. I can show you how someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Misham the stamp of death. Well, it's either the red envelope or the Grammarie envelope. Oh, whoops. Oh, come on. Well, this is has his address on it. Okay, let's just do the red envelope. Think about the text of the letter again. There were two pages in the envelope. This is page one. And this is page two. I want to draw your attention to one phrase in particular. Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. The enclosed stamp, Your Honor. In other words, if I have this straight, the stamp, poison on the stamp, lick, lick, gasp, end quote. Now, what if he had done exactly as the letter asked? He would sign the document, put it in the envelope, and put the stamp on it, right? Then he would put it in his letterbox. Fifteen minutes wouldn't have elapsed between affixing the stamp and mailing the letter. But the clock started ticking, and when the time came, he drew his last breath, and the murder weapon would be taken away from the scene. Clever. Gavin, if you ask me for any proof, I'm going to annihilate you. Such a splendid imagination you have here, forehead. Let me confirm one thing with you, if I might. So, this poison stamp was inside the envelope from seven years ago. Yeah? Is that what you'd have us believe, really? Yes, a very small possibility. How small, I wonder? Um, a poison stamp in this envelope, a stamp that then became the murder weapon. How do you intend to prove this seeming coincidence? Oh, no. <gasps> what the fuck was that? Whoa, what was that? Like my Christoph Gavin impression? Did I sound like him? Uh, don't quit your day job. Don't you have a crime scene to be looking after, Fraulein Detective? Someone had to come dig you all out of the mess you're making of this case. You know, none of this would happen if you just trusted in science a little more. You can find out if that stamp was in the envelope easy. Glare at me all you want, but science is on my side. It's all in the residue, right? That's right, the poison detection spray. Alright, let's check it out. <gasps> there it is! Well, would you look at that? No mistaking it. That's atroquinine residue. I don't believe it. A murder weapon from the past. Now, seven years later, it bears its fangs at last. God, he's mad. Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Why didn't this murder take place seven years ago? Well, I don't, I don't fucking know. There's one possibility. Mr. Misham figured it out. He realized that the person who sent the letter wanted him dead. So he sent his reply with a different stamp and put his decisive evidence in a frame. <laughs> I love this guy. I, I, you know what? Actually, I do like him. He's my, he's my favorite. Though I admit, this is coming as quite a shock. Well, I mean, we know that Vera didn't do it. 
I see no need for further debate on this matter. The sender of the letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. Boom! One day case, let's fucking go. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Oh, son of a gun. I just realized what's about to happen. The court doesn't pronounce anything. A ticket to the afterlife from seven years ago. Tickets for Gaviner's shows are invalid after two weeks. It doesn't make sense any other way. It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There's a fatal contradiction in Herr Forehead's claim. Oh my god, we were so close. A poison stamp was placed in the envelope seven years ago. It was framed until now. If that's the case, then why would Drew Masham have done what he did? I don't know. He got a letter that said, send me a lot of money right now for all your crime. And he panicked when a stupid jerk came in 15 minutes early and just picked up the only stamp he had. Seven years ago, the forger Drew Masham sensed a trap and put the stamp in a frame. I do not debate this, but this begs the question. Why seven years later did he use the stamp on the night of the murder? Surely you don't mean to suggest that Mr. Masham simply forgot. He put the murder weapon in a frame on his desk for seven years and forgot? You expect us to believe he sprang a trap on himself? Maybe he just got careless, man. Well, it's ridiculous, but we gotta go back and investigate. Okay, then how do you explain the poison stamp that was in the envelope? The poison stamp? Where exactly is the poison stamp? Have you brought it to court for us? Functionally, we have every single place it's been but the envelope. I see no proof that such a thing ever existed. I think you do. What about the atroquinine residue, huh? Oh, I agree. That does seem to be atroquinine residue. But hair forehead, it's certainly no stamp. I am going to send you to the Shadow Realm. Even if your precious poison stamp did exist, Drew Masham never would have used it. That is all. Well, I think we've cast enough doubt on our defendant. Seven years ago, Drew Misham received a red envelope. There were traces of the poison atroquinine on the document inside the envelope. A similar trace was also found at the crime scene on this tiny picture frame. The defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope that left the scene of the crime with the poison stamp on it. Even if this envelope contained a poison stamp and Drew Misham, knowing this, put it in a frame, he never would have used the stamp. There's a fatal flaw in the defense's case. of evidence. It's the envelope, right? The only disparity here is that the envelope has been... No.
Okay, maybe not. It's the frame. Objection! What the fuck? How is it Drew Misham? Wait. Did Drew Misham put a body double in? The victim was fake? I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the victim Objective. himself. Congratulations. You've completely lost me. So the fake evidence is none other than the master of fake himself, the forger. Makes a good story. I'll give you that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyway. The... Uh, the Phoenix Wright thing. What if our forger is the fake? Come again? Seven years ago, our forger sniffed a trap and stepped aside. Seven years passed. Now the forger stumbles into the very same trap and dies. Why? Because the forger who was killed was a fake. Here we are again. The victim was fake? Yes. One forger smelled the trap. One forger fell into it. That's two forgers, and one of them was a forge. Oh. So are you telling us that Drumasham the victim was a fake? Well, if he was the fake, who was the real forger? Oh, Jesus. Drumasham wasn't the real forger. There's only one other person it could have been. Forger Drumasham was himself a forgery. Vera has been doing all of the forgery this entire time? There can only be one explanation. The real identity of the forger known as Drew Misham is his daughter, Vera. Order, order, order. Mr. Justice, this is going out on a limb even for you. Kinda agree. Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. If you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. The forgery had been taking place in the studio for quite a time. The forger wasn't caught in the trap seven years ago. This can only mean the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forger. Well, actually, that does make a certain kind of sense. One more thing. Only two sets of fingerprints were found in the Forger's studio, Drew's and Vera's. If we know that Drew Misham wasn't the Forger, that leaves only one possibility by process of elimination. The Forger was Vera. Well... Fascinating. Oh, God. She is going to be the worst witness of all time. You've been paying attention to the trial so far. Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the forger? Drew Misham? I'm used to being stared at by Fraulein's, believe me, though they usually talk to me, too. Tell us, were you the one who forged the works of art? Yes. I love her. I love I love the drawing. So the forger was you. Yes, it was me. Wow. Ooh. The court was in an uproar and it wasn't coming down. We had to break for ten minute recess. Oh my gosh! What a crazy day in court. Okay. So, uh, where does that leave us, Apollo? Well, uh, the Drew Misham who was killed wasn't Drew Misham the Forger. Well, then who was he? Well, he was actually... Doing her nails. Keytrin132, thank you for the sub. So you really made those forgeries. Is she gonna draw? Yes. For father. I know it was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. 
One day, Father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent for making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Uh-oh. She forged, uh, evidence. But in the end, I was making those forgeries. I've never had a good constitution, nor a personality. <laughs> I know very little of the world outside my door. Now, because of me, father is... Well, I don't think that... Do you know about this red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So you were already, uh... You were already creating your works back then? I started when I was only 12. Okay. Oh, God. All right, here we go. Fuck! Can you talk faster? Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right. See, we checked them out and we saw what was underneath. We saw the rough sketches. Yeah, she had been sketching the fucking things that we... The, the cases that we took. I see. Mr. Justice. Father, he knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father, he was watching, gathering information. All about the Wright and Co. law offices. But lately, we're not doing just law. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse, and play piano. Well, they're not really gags. <laughs> Yet when Father heard you had resumed the legal business, how pleased he was. He's the guy who supplied Phoenix with the forged evidence, right? Things are already confusing enough with all these daddies running around. I'm that I'm saying that all the time. All right, well, I mean, I have no idea what we're going to do in the back half of this case. But, you know, we're here to prove that Vera didn't murder her father, and I think that's pretty likely at this point. Well, she's going to be real easy to perceive. How did you set up this Drew Misham forger persona? Oh, boy. <laughs> I know it's hard for you, but he's a handsome guy. It is hard for me, I'll tell you that. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? You fucking asshole! Perhaps you'd rather answer my question. Were you the one who painted the painting? The remarkably similar one? Yes. I painted it, yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So she was the one who made the forgeries. Yet she did not wish to reveal the truth of their operations. The victim was a stand-in, a decoy. To the world at large, she was the forger, not her. I've done a bad thing. I have, haven't I? Well, yes, to forging. Hey, we need a little more information about, for instance, this. You have seen this before, yeah? Yes. I was- it was in the desk drawer. Oh, Christ. Oh, no. Okay. This is gonna be some rough testimony. Hey, let's, uh, save the state. The red envelope. I created things and father sold them. This envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Father handled the deal, all of it. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Okay. What do you mean by that? These things you were making. Uh, you mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. 
I was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was 12. Wow. Your Honor, she had no idea what she was doing was illegal. Easy there, little attorney. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Okay. All right. We'll deal with the forgery later. This envelope came after my first work that was other than a painting. What? You'd only done paintings up to that point. Yes. But father had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance, for instance, a letter someone had written. A fingerprint. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> And the $100,000 promised in this letter was the start, the beginning of a new industry for Drew Misham. The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Fuck. Well, I see why Phoenix picked this case. Forging evidence, in other words. So you didn't know how the things you were making were being used? This is important. I enjoy painting very much. The Fraulein has lived an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. I received the stamp that was in the envelope. What do you mean you received it? Papa Thano, thank you for the sub. Did I do something wrong? You didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back, at your planning. A moment here, forehead. You can't force an answer upon the witness. Perhaps you would tell me, Fraulein Vera, why did you receive this stamp? It was beautiful. It was a commemorative stamp. Yes, I think it was. So you didn't know about the... She literally framed it because it's a pretty picture. Oh, come on. No. So the trap failed by mistake, thanks to this commemorative stamp. Hmm, quite the close call. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. Okay. So Vera did the work, and he supplied the face. All right, still with you. So you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Oh, great! Apparently not. Perfect! That's great news! She didn't know what she was doing was illegal. She thought she was just doing nice little copies for her father. Uh, and she would have no reason to kill him, therefore. You know, why would she kill him? Great! Let's get out of court. We did it. It was very pretty. And more than that, it was a picture of people I liked at the time. What is the guitar doing here? Apparently we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. See what we got. Oh, fuck. I knew that piss wizard would make his way into this case. Magicians? 
I love mysterious things. I always have. Even though she fainted when she saw Mr. Hat. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. See? See? <laughs> Fine, yes, it's great. Okay. But the magic troupe we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. A deadly weapon in a red envelope. The path it took to take Drew Misham's life. Created things that father sold them. This envelope here. I handled the deal. Receive the stamp. It was after the we moved. And this is this is the one that we have to look at. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. <sighs> Come with us to the fucking magic show. <laughs> Those magicians you liked. Was it this bunch? They're not a bunch! <laughs> Still, I have to wonder, why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? Good question. Pretty stamps are always better, and you can't beat Troop Grammarie! But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think, Prosecutor Gavin? What? Is he okay? What's going on, buddy? Might I ask just one question of this witness? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than a painting. Please tell me, what exactly did you make? Can I ask why? No, answer the question, now. Eek, okay. What is going on here? Yes, it is unbecoming of me, I apologize. But I must know. Please, Miss Misham, tell me. It was a book. A single page in a book. A book. Please be more specific. It was a handwritten book. Like a diary. What the f- Is he okay? Miss Misham, this book. Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover, yes or no? How did you know? Oh no! Gavin, what the fuck is going on? Stop badgering her. She... He's told you nothing, has he? Your soiled, sullied mentor. Nothing. Uh, no! We, <laughs> we don't know shit! He never told you about the trial seven years ago? About how he came to lose his attorney's badge? No, we don't know any of that! It was a piece of evidence that decided his fate. A certain diary. On the back, it bore the mark of a silk hat. Uh, okay? Phoenix Wright, tossed out of the profession by false evidence, and the forger who made the evidence... Is this girl standing right in front of me? That's fine. He shouldn't have done it. Vera, you must tell us. The evidence you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham to forge the evidence? For all of our sakes. Is she gonna say it? We only met once. Uh-huh. It was... It was... I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book. The diary. The 
devil? Oh no. Fuck. They got her too. Well, we did it. Baron Misham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. She is in intensive care and not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case at first glance, until it finally began to show its true colors. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. What? Wait, we have a second trial? <laughs> Holy shit. Jesus Christ. All right, okay, 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 okay. Let's go. Showdown time. Showdown! That's not what he says. Showtime! I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time and only lost twice. Who was the first? It was Edgeworth, the man I killed, of course. Well seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Why, yes. Over a game of cards. That was how we first met. Seven years ago. Are we gonna get to play as Phoenix? Oh, this is sick. Whew, okay. Been a long time since I felt like such a rookie. Gotta try and relax. Good morning, Mr. Enigmar. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not even sure I'm prepared. I understand I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trucy! Morning, Daddy. I'm so glad you came. Aww. I am fine, as always. This old boy is here to help me. That's a young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh. What? <laughs> huh? Interesting. Oh, we got some other stuff, too. Crime photo. Body found in hospital room, shot in forehead. What the fuck? Magnifiki's autopsy report. We'll get through it, somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy. An easy win, then, yes? They're calling him a true thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Of course, there's one of those every year.
they will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, but do not worry. That's strange. I'll do what I can. See, you do not understand. It will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. I don't like that. Shadi Enigmar, known to the world as Zach Gramarye. Oh, okay. Huh. Wildly popular magician star of Troop Gramarye, his mentor, Magnifique, was a rare breed of magician. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. Zach is the suspect. Okay, so I think I've figured out what's happening here. Uh, we were handed this um, piece of evidence uh, that is clearly a forgery. Uh, that says, ah, well, I guess I will die. Um, that's going to make it look like a suicide. His autopsy confirms that he has a malignant tumor, so he decides to go out on his own terms. It's kind of set up in a way that it makes sense. Huh. <laughs> that's so neat. Uh, is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking, is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill. One of the worst. This is a trial, ya? Yeah? Where are the sweaty palms, the pounding hearts? A Gaviner's concert has got ten times the thrill this gig's got. He's already in the Gaviner's. Who were you again? Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started, legally. Yeah. Uh, Gavin? Defense attorney Christoph Gavins. Ah, figures my bro's more famous in this part of town. Clavier Gavin, lead singer for the mega hit band, the Gaviner's. You're out of your league, rock boy. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. Yes, that is it. Well, you got me. True. My debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby uh, to me compared to this, yeah? Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Euro rock accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up. Hair attorney right. All right, let's make it happen. At Chung, baby, time to call in the opening act. What was his name again? Ah, yes. Detective Gumshoe. Yes! <laughs> Let's go, baby. Oh. And you are? Hey, you were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. Hey, you. Huh? Today's the day, pal. Today I win and you lose. That is correct. I got confidence in my testimony, see? You know what, you normally lack it? <laughs> Pair detective, this is my stage. Cut the antics. Huh? All this hay-ewing and such. And I could care less about your history together. Ugh. Alright, let's go. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. The facts are as simple as they come. That's, that's what they always say, baby. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient, asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam, lights out. Them's the facts. Those are that, okay, you know what? That is pretty simple. The retired Magnifies have been in the hospital bed for a year. A mal-ignorant tutor. <laughs> oh, gumfuck. Uh, okay. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was just gonna die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. He was about to shoot up with insulin when he was shot with a pistol. Syringe found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. 
As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Okay. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? What reason could he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting. Yes, sir. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. What? The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man. You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here the letter in question. That's interesting. To my beloved student, Zach, do you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain? Come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m., I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Interesting. Although, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of this letter. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Detective Gumshoe, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, Herr Attorney. Was there some reason? As it turns out, there was. Every night for a half hour, starting at 11, the victim, Magnifi Gramarier, was given an IV. There it is in the picture, off to the side of the bed. At 11, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night without fail. I see. Very well. Shall we begin? Mr. Wright. Hmm. Let's see if we can figure this out. Oh, you even get the Phoenix Sprite. The victim kind of ordered the thing. Hold it! Hold it. Oh. Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all, just as he had commanded. Could be a setup. But let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. Fine. I can play it slow as well as I can play it fast. On with the testimony, Gumshoe. And this letter was sent by the victim? There it is. Gotcha. You're all mine this time, pal. Huh? I had the handwriting checked out. Of course, it's the victim's. I see. What? <laughs> But a letter ordering your own death? Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace even now, Your Honor. So anyway, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you. Learn to think for yourself. Okay. First, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. Oh, my goodness. We've also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows it has been fired recently. If only we had some sort of ballistic marking. <laughs> Why not take the gum gun with you? So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in the argument. Clearly, Mr. Ignigmar shot something else. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had one shot. Oh no, a reason he couldn't refuse. That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. No. The defense disagrees. 
you see the defendant had another choice you could make. Oh. So he's already pounding. What, you can prove that with this photo? I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Right. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did the defendant shoot? The fucking doll, right? The clown doll? Cl take a closer look. See? It's been shot in the forehead, too. There's a hole in its forehead. Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim. Ha! And I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown. Well, shooting people is bad. He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. This is strange. It's hair forehead. <laughs> the defense has raised an intriguing possibility. The hole in the clown's forehead definitely looks like it was shot. Send someone to investigate the matter. I admit, I'm impressed. But I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. He put one bullet in the gun. Perhaps he did have to shoot a forehead as ordered, but the letter says nothing about whose forehead. Okay, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're gonna work with it. So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. So let me get this straight. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim. Hey, not a bad summary. More of a confirmation, but whatever. Really more of a con- <laughs> But our defense attorney seems pleased enough with himself. Oh my goodness. So we actually already have it. Uh, which you will shoot one shot. Oh, do we actually have the gun? That would be nice. We don't. Oh, this isn't it? He's even saying it! It's- it Oh, he's saying the old things! Okay, well, that looks correct. This is strange. He still shot the victim. How do we know that? I just feel like... If we had the gun in the court record, we could shoot Gumshoe. That's true. check. Hmm, an unused needle.
This is weird. Let's sit back and think for a second. <clears throat> yes, a few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. Yes, the defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. Disagree. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. Hilsta97, thank you for the sub. <laughs> Zach and Volant stand on either side of a girl. Then they shoot, but the bullets don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of the pistols they used in their show. Hmm. It can only hold one round. It can only hold one round. It can only hold one round. Oh, it can only hold one round. Well, you know, it can only hold one round. It can only hold the one round. Uh, you know, it's it can only hold the one round. Uh... Yep, it, you know, it can only hold the one round. Uh, it can only hold the one round. The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If only you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Yeah, but like I just said, pal, after he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Mm -mm. Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. I heard it can only hold one round. <laughs> if he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim, too. Oh. It's been so long. Objection! That's not a contradiction, not even close. All he had to do is reload the pistol after the first shot. No. Where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it. Urgh. Heh. <laughs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party's only getting started, and I haven't proven everything yet behind my good looks. It's startling record sales. Okay, let's go. Hmm. Well, what's this? It seems the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, Hair Detective was just the warm-up act. Ugh. Now that the audience has gotten a little taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? For my decisive witness. We'll see. It's good to see Gumshoe again. Good to fucking donk him as well. That was, like, not close.
Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say, I expected nothing less. Well, we've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you discovered the truth for yourself. I was thinking of you, you know. I think we need less thinking and more talking. The night in the hospital, what happened? Ah, the way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself, the letter. The one shot in the forehead, one, right, yes, and the reason he speaks of. Could not deny my mentor's wishes, even if it meant my own death. Why not? This is something I will not say, for now at least. I have done many things in my life, some well, some poorly, but this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. You wanted to know about the night of the incident? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. Yes, the one I had used on stage and the one that had been used by my partner, Valant. My mentor had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. And I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my resolve faltered. Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last request, though not his first. So there were other requests you couldn't refuse. To be honest, I've not always been steadfast. And I fear I've brought pain upon Trucy. What? Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. I turned and shot the clown. I took the pistol and I, I had fired and placed it in my pocket. I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you will find it to be different than the one in my mentor. The ballistic markings! Well, that is all I have to tell you. You are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thank you. There is something. My mentor. His eyes opened. The old devil. He was not asleep, you see. Of course, the gunshot would have woken him anyway. And there we had our last discussion as mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion. Five, ten minutes. What did you talk about? <laughs> Mr. Wright, it does not concern this case. Something is happening here. Once again, I am in your hands. Right, yeah, let's go. Is it gonna be fucking Piss Wizard? Oh, it's Piss Wizard. Oh, it's fucking Piss Wizard. Okay, sure. Ooh, he actually looks worse. Valant Gramarier, magician. And you're the decisive witness, are you? You can prove your fellow student's guilt. Fate. The grand illusion, filled with traps and tricks. The shooting took place in that hospital after 11 o'clock at night. If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? If one were to deduce this logically, the conclusion is... Yes. Okay. I always get the characters, don't I? I have an interesting fact for you. You see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. That's the same letter. Or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Oh, God. Order, order, order. And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. To my beloved student, Volant, to you, I entrust the task of bearing my life's curtain from the 13th. 
Eleven twenty. I will ready a gun, which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse. We both know the reason why. Court accepts this into evidence. This is unusual. What was your troop up to? By which you mean? I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him, both of them. It's my opinion, Herr Judge, but from these letters, I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and so doing shared much of our lives. When people are so close, there is a strain, a warping of relations, you might say. This has nothing to do with the case at hand. I hate this fucking guy. Jesus Christ. Can you just talk like a normal person? That night, I visited the hospital room at the time Magnifi... The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions. Yet to deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown! Um... Uh... He's saying he shot the clown. All right, let's try it. Which, according to the letter, was 1120? Indeed. In magic, timing is everything. Right. Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt double has left, how would that work? Why would reveal the very secrets of my magic? Okay, let's move on. So you weren't worried for your own safety at all? You smelled gunpowder? What if the shooter was still nearby? Whoa. I did not consider this, to be honest. It's forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. <laughs> really? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. Now you are the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. What is going on here? Huh. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does, and my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnifi wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have a will of steel, and also because he was dead. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars, so perhaps steel isn't all so strong. Mind if I continue? I guess so, buddy. Go ahead. Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death sweet kiss I gave to the clown. There were two bullet holes at the scene, one in the victim and one in the clown. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you. No doubt my partner Zack has said much the same thing. Yes, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what precisely? Two pistols were used in the Zack and Volant quick draw shooting, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room. So this is cool, but also makes sense, because Zack took the pistol. So you picked up that pistol and fired it. Indeed I did. Alakazam. Alakazing. Alakaboom. Hmm. 
Yeah, sure. This is strange. I'm gonna try these other ones. Oh, I guess I don't need to because I have already got it correct. Okay. So you took the only pistol there and fired it. That's correct. And that pistol was this one, which was left at the crime scene. Good show, I see you too are a magician of sorts. And you're an idiot of sorts. Do you have any idea what you just said? Well, we have an understanding that the... I see the fire in your eyes as you glare at the witness. So how about heating up this trial a bit? These slow ballads bore me. Fine, fine, fine. In order to shoot a pistol, you need a bullet. Where was the bullet? I entered the room and took the pistol in my hand. The bullet was already loaded, ready to fire at any time. A magician is always prepared, you see. Prepared for... One never knows when a miracle will be called for. Oh my god, stop. Is this bullet that was loaded into the pistol so important? Well, certainly. Without a loaded bullet, we wouldn't have murder. It's very important, Your Honor. So the fuck up here is we have the ballistic markings, right? The pistol was already loaded. I had to pull the trigger. Wait, how is this not it? What? How is this not it? This is so good! The pistol was already loaded. I merely had to pull the trigger. If the pistol was already loaded, something doesn't make sense. Why weren't the victim's fingerprints on it? Now we all wear gloves. That's weird. I guess it is. I I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, we said the rifling marks in the bullet match the victim's head, but I presented the one that says that. And it said, fuck you. <laughs> I guess we can go to the... Crime photo now. Okay, now I'm lost. I took up the pistol from the small table and shot the clown. Why did you do that? We, yeah, the bullet is extremely important. See, we know, look, rifling marks match the bullet found in the victim. Okay, 
this is the one. So why don't we just show him this and it works? But it doesn't work! I'm losing my mind. of a bitch i'm going to lose my mind when he entered the room there were two pistols on that table one of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead then he left with it in his pocket of course this is what he would say unlike the hapless clown we must assume our defendant has some brains in his head well uh what about what mr volant has told us there's something about his testimony that doesn't make sense what might that be i told you i took the pistol that was there and shot the clown ah but we have that's your story at least but the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Vallant. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. <sighs> Mr. Vallant, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Ooh, it, it synced up. Bah, bah, bah. This is all rather sudden. HS Bebo, thank you for the sub. Objection! Objection. <laughs> What have I done? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. You son of bitch bastard. That's not what you told us before. You said you'd verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you quite right now. Quite sincerely, I might add. Son of a... You are... Yes! That was this morning. I am still young. And I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took a pistol from the scene of the crime, we wouldn't be having this pleasant discussion now. Ballant? Yes, Your Honor? You were presented to this court as a decisive witness, but you've proven to be more divisive than decisive. Update the ballistic markings, you son of a bitch. You'll see in time. The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Vallant entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot, as his next testimony will prove. Alright, here we go. God, I have missed playing as Phoenix. He is just so capable. I arrived at the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death, 11.10, and the one in the room that night was my partner, not me. Hmm. Those times are rather close, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. Son of a bitch. Oh no, this is where we present the forged evidence. <laughs> Magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus Pocus requires admirable focus. In the time of death determined by the doctor, there is an incontrovertible truth. I would hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad, sweeping accusations, lest we blur the focus this case so clearly demands.
damn it. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified. Magic revels in making the complex appear simple, but reality is the opposite. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. The point here is the IV the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Recall what we heard earlier. Every night at 11, Magnifique took an IV drip for 30 minutes. See the bag right there, yes? Now look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the bag to the end. Oh, I see. Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was shot. That would seem to be the case. When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. You could just measure the remaining IV liquid precisely. The IV liquid functions for our purposes as an hourglass. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. In the amount remaining in the bag, it was determined the IV had stopped 10 minutes after administration began. And so it was. When I, Volant, entered that room, 10 minutes had passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. That's horrible. That's very important, yeah. Well, seeing how it is the biggest clue we have to the time of death, it's very important. Agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine the time. Behold the power of arithmetic. Okay, put it in your testimony. This forged evidence is really good, too. It's really good. I'm going to do it without it. I'm going to change the timeline. I think this is the right time. Yeah. Hmm. There was no one in that room but Magnifici, and he was departed. I have here Defendant Zach Guamarier's sworn deposition. I snuck into his room at the appointed time. It was ten minutes before I left the room, the victim was still alive. God damn it, come on! Baited, legitimate baited. always yes that's what you were thinking no it's it's been not yes previously 
But there is an issue with that testimony, which is, do we know that these letters went to the right people? Yes, we do, because they say to my beloved Zack. Okay, well, if I had known that, I would have said no. You walk in on a murder, and the first thing you do is shoot the clown. The disciple does what the disciple must. My mentor's request, without reason, had called a surfeit of sorrow. For what would I, Volant, be now without him? May the soul of Magnifique the Great find greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled the lonely trigger. In any case, this is nothing more than what we have already done. I, this guy sucks. It's the same thing. Come on. Okay, so it's it's this, it's this one. And he knew this by the amount of IV liquid left. Indeed, apparently doctors, as well as magicians, have a few tricks up their sleeves. The impact of the shot caused the IV needle to drop, telling us the time of death. The, decre the deceased's final message to this word. If I let the alibi go through, I'm finished. There has to be a hole in there somewhere. Heck, I'll take a pinprick. Oh, well, that was not... I mean, that was not very subtle. <laughs> Other one. Objection. Okay, shit. But here's the deal. trying to say that he wasn't using the IV. I think you're thinking too far ahead. Yes.
signs of use. I, I just feel like... How does this not trigger the correct thing? Son of a bitch! You have to press him twice on this! You are fucking with me! My lucky color. Indeed. Piss. It stinks. Yeah, why not? Your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor, the witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. What? This is so shitty. Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination. Baseless accusations will be penalized. I do hope this latest accusation is based. Don't worry, I've got all your bases right here. Very well, let's hear the defense's claim. Where is your evidence that contradicts what Mr. Volant has told us? Well, his lucky color... Well, we have this. The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. The photo of the crime scene? All this talk of color has me yearning for black and white, clear-cut simplicity. Tell us here, right? Just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure. And I assure you, it's quite simple. But I can't promise anything in black and white. What in this photo contradicts the witness's testimony? Well, the IV bag isn't piss yellow, for one. Volant Grammarier, let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow, yes. That kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yes. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? Uh, yeah. The IV is not yellow. Which means that Volant switched out the IV! Confusion, doubt, tell us, what do your elderly eyes spy? Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Volant. Look at the IV bag. Uh, what is this? What foul ma magic? It would be hard to call the IV liquid yellow. I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. Ah, Alakas, Al Alaka, no! <laughs> That's fun. What does this mean? Bam. Nothing. This is some kind of mistake. Hey, yes, Prosecutor Gavin, your witness's mistake. <laughs> the greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Volant Grammarier, as you reminded us several times, your lucky color is yellow, but the ivy is not. Well, this contradiction can mean one thing. Objection. Huh? And to think, you almost had me. Huh? I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. <laughs> yes, a contradiction. One that I shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. What do you mean by that? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree at a glance the IV liquid does appear sort of greenish yellow, but I assure you the liquid itself is quite yellow. As far as I can tell from this photo, it's green. Yes, but what color is the ivy bag itself? Son of a bitch, shut up. I guess it's blue. Put a yellow liquid in a blue bag and you get green. This, incidentally, is the liquid's true color. Uh, okay. So? As I thought. There's no substitute for experience, Prosecutor Gavin. What? You may tell a good tale, but you've just proven something rather grave. For you, that is. Grave. The liquid in the IV is yellow, yes. But how did this witness know that? It's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it, didn't you? Ah. Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. At the scene of the crime, the IV liquid appears to be green. So let me ask, 
How did the witness know the IV liquid was actually yellow? Oh! Order, order, order. Mr. Wright, you will explain this at once. He knew the color of the IV liquid, so I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness, Volant Grammarier, has testified the IV liquid was yellow because... He'd seen it before. The witness knew that the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before. But not inside the blue bag we see the photo. He saw the liquid by itself in a clear colorless bag. I suppose he would have too? Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, Your Honor. Objection! I'm afraid I find nothing. So what if he knew the IV liquid's color? Leave the getting excited over absolutely nothing to our teeny bopper fans, yeah? <laughs> you stupid slut. The IV liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30-minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, there's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. An hourglass uses sand and an IV bag uses liquid. I'm right, right? No. Uh, n no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body, at which point, like magic, it disappears. However, what if the amount of IV liquid had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Let me get this straight, air right. You're saying the, vic the witness watered down the victim's IV bag? I'm saying it's a possibility. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. Now, wait, wait, wait. I said wait. How might an amateur such as myself essay to perform such a task? You're a professional. I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. I'm afraid there's quite a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? I, at least, would have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into that bag. You don't need to be an expert to see the look on the witness's face. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. <clears throat> oh no. I do have evidence. Valent Grammarier, I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in a life of crime. Might I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Magic relies on props, and props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the prop was... The victim's syringe? It's the perfect prop for the magically increasing IV trick, and easy enough for an amateur to use. What kind of evidence is that? The syringe was clean, not a trace of liquid in it. And don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin. The victim had the syringe to administer his insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside. Well, Valant Grammarier, as you pointed out yourself, the IV liquid makes the perfect clock, one that you could manipulate at will. Alaka Zag! I like this a lot. I do believe, well, with this being his first, uh, that the burden of this trial has been a bit too much to bear for Prosecutor Gavin. I'm afraid that while there is a doubt as to the amount of IV liquid in the bag, the time of death cannot be proven. And that brings our trial to a close for today. Well, maybe I can squeeze an extra day out of this. Do a little much-needed investigation work. See, there are no objections. Court is a Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck! There's no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the truth so effectively. A word to the wise. Underestimate the young and they'll sweep your feet out from under you. In a way you never, ever expect. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of the IV liquid, but there is no proof. There's no proof he didn't do it either. Yes, quite true. Okay. Nor is this witness quite as decisive as I'd hoped. This I admit, after all. Why linger in the past when the future holds so much? You have something? Oh, no. No, come on. Damn it. 
Today's IV is in, maybe the last, so the rest of them, the first should come soon. The journal may end here or it may go on. Not long. That depends on his hand. All that's left is mine to lay down the pen. Read the very last part with particular care. This journal may end here or it may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. Of course, his he refers to our defendant, Zach Grammar Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Yep, just about done. I see the defense understands the meaning of this. The victim's diary does not go on. It ends! Because Magnifique's life was brought to an end by his defendant, Zach Grammarier. Son of a bitch. I was going to show it and be like, it's missing a page. Take that! First, take a close look at the diary. Note that a page has clearly been ripped out. As it just so happens, I have here what I believe to be the missing page. Looking at this page, it's hard to imagine the first visitor that night shot a Magnifique Grammarier. That's the defense's position. Hi, this is the continuation of the victim's diary! Note the torn edge of the page. It's a perfect match. Would you care to explain what all this means, Herr Attorney? The diary continued after his first visitor came, which means that the victim was still alive after Zach Grammarier left, leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Handwriting, too, matches that on the other pages. This is without a doubt the genuine article. Son of a bitch, come on. But why would Gavin be pissed off about it? That's impossible. The old man couldn't have written that. Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you? Resist what? Herr Judge, might I request we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. I ask only to put it on hold, please. Five minutes, I promise, Your Honor. I guess...
I had a bad feeling just then. That ripped out page was too obvious. He must have known. And I should have known it was a bad sign all around. It's Drew. Yes, yes, sir. State your name and occupation for the record. Uh, my name's Drew Misham. I'm a painter. And you are related to the case? Well, not per se. I have one question for the witness. Mr. Misham, was it? Do you know what this is? Oh. Yes, I know it well. Have you seen this diary somewhere before? Uh, yeah. I mean, I made it. You made it? Yes, you might call it one of my works. The regional prosecutor's office received a tip-off yesterday. Illegal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Zach graham -Arie. I initiated an investigation and found this witness. A painter to the world at large, Drew Misham has another side, you might say. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. Forgeries, in other words. Well... So, we are to understand that this page here is a fake, prepared by a certain defense attorney. Whoa, 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 this was handed to me. Objection! Ah, the attorney speaks. Something about this page, I presume, but what is he saying? It makes no sense. It was you who presented the evidence to us, Phoenix Wright. Uh, Mr. Misham, who requested this forgery? Who was your client? That's... I, I don't know. What? Most of my clients prefer to remain anonymous, even to me. I make the items they want and receive my payment. That's the extent of my contract. But there's no proof this is a fake. It's a fake. Huh? To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say without a doubt, this is mine. Mr. Wright, you have just presented illegal evidence to this court. It was careless of me. That's all I can say. It was all a trap. A fatal trap. Mr. Wright, yes. Do you have an explanation for yourself? Well, if I did, would the court hear it? Probably not. Forging evidence is a serious crime, and presenting it in court, a serious mistake. A fatal mistake for an attorney. Fatal too, perhaps for your client, I fear. Tell me, what kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. A guilty one. Your Honor, wait. I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime, but you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an individual. I am sorry, Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Another close call, I dare say. The prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip. Everything would have gone the way you wanted it to. I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. Oh, Jesus. That's agony. Mr. Attorney? Yes? Could I ask your name? Uh, Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright. I have seen and studied many people, but none like you. I'll remember you, Mr. Wright. Oh, man. Oh, tell me they don't find him guilty. Ah, uh, Your Honor. There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. It is impossible. I'm... Oh, no.
Mr. Enigmar. Wait, did he actually get away? <laughs> from my ass. <sighs> that trial seven years ago was the beginning of it all. This I know beyond a doubt. The mysteries of the past work their magic on the present, but you'll soon be finding all of this out for yourself. here at the Mason system. What? DS exploding. So you've got eight locations. Four in the past and four in the present. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, I gotta stop here for today. This is ridiculous. That trial seven years ago was the beginning of it all. This I know beyond a doubt. The mysteries of the past work their magic on the present, but you'll soon be finding all of this out for yourself. All right, so just so where, where we were yesterday, where we left off, we had pretty much proven that Magnifi Gramarie uh, was killed by the piss wizard and not the shit wizard. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't matter because the piece of evidence we used to prove his innocence was a forgery. Now, realistically, we didn't need to prove uh, anything with that piece of evidence because, you know, the conclusion is that the uh, diary continued after writing that page, which you can see by the pulled out page. But we presented the page anyway because we're very stupid and immediately got kicked out of law forever. Um, seven years later, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, is uh, attempting to coerce the otherwise completely fair and balanced justice system of Japanifornia into adopting the jury system enjoyed by such wonderful nations as America. In this game, we will now traverse between the past and the present. So, I guess we'll try it out. Where's Zack? Where's Knack? And what about Schlack? All of this and more. When we load up the Mason system... The Mason system, of course, is the system that enables time travel. <clears throat> 
And here's Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, who has also become a Time Lord. Is it called the Mason System because of Perry Mason? That's so fucking funny. That's hilarious. Okay, my one. It's time for my one f uh, funny Perry Mason story. Um. So, uh, you know how in Perry Mason there is a recurring, I guess, defense attorney, right? Uh. Who is it? I'm trying to look it up. Paul Drake is that it? No, uh, William Tallman, uh, as Hamilton Berger. He's the, uh, he's the DA who just shows up and loses to Perry Mason every time, right? Okay, so, uh, I loved watching Perry Mason growing up. Uh, it was always on me TV at night, and my mom and I would watch it together. My mom is not super old either. I'm not, there's no reason we should like this show, but it is really well written. It's very interesting. And they don't make shows like Perry Mason anymore. They just don't. It, it uh, anyway, um, uh, so <laughs> the, uh, the funniest part of, um, uh, the funniest part of Perry or of Perry Mason is that Perry Mason is this like straight laced, no nonsense, like, uh, you know, man's man, right? And uh, Hamilton Berger, who is the DA, is basically a fucking queer, right? Like, they don't come out and say it, but he's this, like, kind of prancy, flamboyant sort of DA, right? Um, and uh, in real life, uh, the actor who played the DA was extremely straight, aggressively straight. And Raymond Burr, who was Perry Mason, was leading a secret gay life. <laughs> It's crazy. Truly, they were both acting. <laughs> it ends up being a little sad because, I, basically, uh, he, he Raymond Burr lived a lie for his entire life. But, yeah. Oh yeah, we also get to use the Magatama here. God, I we should we should do some Perry Mason watch alongs. Those have gotta be in the public domain by now, right? How do, how do we go to the present? I can't click it. You can't yet. You have to start in the past. All right. There's a bar association! It's hard to work when your attorney's badge has been taken away. I have to hand it to my partner. He knows how to make an exit. That's talent. Yes, he made my attorney's badge disappear and he never even touched it. Glory's spotlight always leaves someone weeping in the shadows, yet his very disappearance itself is a revelation. Zach Grimarie killed Magnifici. It's as good as a signed confession. God, I hate this guy. Certainly been public opinion's take on it. 
I grow tired of my cage, and the time of my release is near. I must go and prepare. Planning on jumping back into the magic right away? As long as an audience waits with batted breath, there will be volant. And also, now that my partner has disappeared, Magnifique's repertoire is mine. Interesting. Is that how you say baited? I thought baited breath was B-A-I-T. Really? It's an abbreviation of the word abated. Wow. <clears throat> you receive one of those letters too. Dumbass. Hey, shut the fuck up. You're permed. What the f Don't don't call me a dumbass, dumbass. Now that my partner has vanished, the question is moot. I'm interested in learning something else, actually. I want to know what Magnifique had up his sleeve. I'm throwing a C in there. There's not a C. How could he coerce you and your partner to kill him? The trick up his sleeve? Ha 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 ha. Perhaps you do not know. A great magician never reveals his secrets. Oh! All right, well, we don't have the material to do this yet, clearly. Let's schmove. Let's go to defendant lobby number two. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way, this trial is over. <clears throat> yeah, he morbed out of there. When I came here on that fateful morning, I still had my badge, but now, like an amputated limb, I could still feel it itching. Where do I start? I don't even have the authority to investigate. Hey, you there, sir! There is no shot that Petty Officer Mike Meekins is in this game. You are fucking with me. No way is he in here. Oh my god. Well, he's still Mike Meekins. I just say it like it is, sir, and it's usually wrong. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, and even my wallet. We've met before, haven't we? On a case two years ago. No recollection of that, sir! Yeah, I feel like this guy does not remember much of anything. Oh my god. You're the bailiff, right? Yes, sir! Court Bailiff Mike Meekins. You were in charge of security at the time of the vanishing. I'm dying over here! It's a hard knock life, sir. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, and we literally already heard this. I love that we have two talk options and one is just Meekins. You're still wearing your police officer uniform. I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but last year tragedy struck a rising star at the precinct. I lost my case files four times in three days. Wow. <clears throat> 
so you were the one who let the magician get away. God, he is... I open the door to see what might be amiss. The door slams open. Slam. Some guy's face is right there in front of me. Face. <laughs> so you saw someone suspicious coming your way. Yes, and I, being a bailiff of little standing, gave chase. I chased that silk hat all the way down the hall, sir. I have a diagram of the court building here. There's courtroom number seven. That's where I was. And which way did he run? He went up and then around the corner. So I ran after him. When I turned the corner, I saw him run into the defendant lobby. I ran. Following him, I threw myself boldly into the room in lobby number two. Oh my god, stop. Oh my god, shut shut up. Shut the fuck up. Rapty boy, thank you for the sub. She meekin on my right till I phoenix. Really bad. Just not good. I guess let's keep talking. So Zach was in this room when he vanished. Absolutely, sir. I saw him with my own eyes. Eyes! The red silk hat. The flowing cape. He ran right in here inside this room. Silk hat, cape. That's Zach, all right. But sir, look at the room. There's not a single place to hide. There was nothing I could do but nothing, sir. What about now? Have any ideas? Sir! Ideas about what? What? How is there a Magatama for this? Can we examine? Oh, we can. Let's swoosh around here. <laughs> I actually took a nap on that couch once when I was still practicing law. Boy, was that a mistake. I never even sit on the lobby sofas now. I've never let my clients sit on them e either. It's bad luck. I guess this door was a prop in Zach Grammarier's last show. He passed through it and vanished, but to where? You know, I think this was the lobby I used for my very first case. Well, shit. That's... Everything I... Check the ceiling? Nope. Not a lot to look at here. Sorry, doing this real quick. There we go. Alright, I'm done talking to Mike. Let's go to the law offices. Morning, Daddy. Right, 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 right. Why are we having a flashback? Good morning. It's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks! My first show is today. Two weeks had passed since then. I called her into my office. Oh, where's she been for two weeks? Trucy, there's something we need to talk about. It's been two weeks since your father disappeared. We need to start thinking about your future. 
I did some calling around. This is hard to say, but you have no living relatives. So I was wondering if you wanted to stay with me for a while. Just until your daddy comes home. It won't be long, I hope. Uh, of course, it's totally your choice. If you don't like it here, you can go wherever you'd like. I could look up some places you might like to stay at. Mr. Attorney, Daddy told me about you. He said I could trust you. Really? So if I stay here, does that mean you'll be my family? Oh! She's so stinking cute. Oh, she's adorable! Getting weirder. Mr. Attorney, uh, why don't you call me Nick? Or you can call me Daddy if you'd like. It doesn't have to be today or anything. Okay, say, Daddy? All right. <laughs> yes, if I move here, I have to switch schools, right? And I was thinking, I haven't paid for lunches at my last school for a year. So thanks. Ah. This office, it's a little blah. A little color goes a long way, you know? Ah. You got fired from work, right? Don't you worry one bit. I'll work twice as hard. We'll make it through this. Trucy, how old are you? I'm eight. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Trucy's great. Stick with me and you'll do just fine, Daddy. <laughs> what, a, what a cutie. Ah, thanks. So, you got fired from being a lawyer, right? You could, you know, kind of look aside or something. My other daddy always used to talk about foolish pride. Actually, that's pretty accurate. So here's my idea. We'll make a new office. Law just seems so stiff. And no one will be my friend at school that way. Well, that won't do, I guess. Uh, I just don't know much about anything other than law. Or even much about law, if you were to ask some people. Maybe the problem is calling it an office. We should run an agency instead. Like a talent agency? Forgive me for asking, but uh, doesn't that require talent? You've got me, don't you? I'm a professional. A professional? Yep. After all, I am directly descended from the famous Zach Grammarier. He's your father. And now I'm directly descended from the famous Phoenix Wright, too. That is not how it works. Could you tell me a bit more about your daddy? Or Zach Grammarier? Sure thing, daddy. <laughs> Daddy's so amazing. The biggest star of Troop Grammarier. And they're big. The Grammariers, they were on television a lot. I've seen them on much recently, come to think of it. Big magic happens when you put Zach and Volant together, you know? Once they made a giant waterfall right there on stage. And this giant trout swam up the giant waterfall. Uh, there was a giant fisherman waiting for him at the top. I wish I could have seen more of Daddy's magic. I wonder what'll happen to me with Daddy and Mommy both gone. Who's Mommy? But I have my magic and a great Daddy, even if he is unemployed. You know, I think things are going to be okay. Right, let's try, let's try Mommy here. Could you tell me about your Mommy, if it's okay? Mommy was so pretty. She was like an angel up on stage. Oh, okay. She was always there with Zach and Volant smiling, but then she went away. It was a grand illusion, but she made a mistake. She vanished, and I guess she didn't know how to get back. Interesting. Interesting. This is the fucking locket that What's-His-Name had. Kristoff. This is your mother? She's beautiful. Her name's Thalassa Grammarier. Sure. <clears throat> okay, we've got the locket. Who's the professional? So, Trucy, you're a professional? Yes, uh, it's like that thing they say. Baby frogs grow up to be frogs? They say that? I always thought it was funny, though. Aren't baby frogs called tadpoles? Maybe they thought it would be easier to understand that way for kids. Okay. So, in conclusion, you're a professional magician. That's right. All right, let's, let's see.
Mr. Hat in the year of our Lord, 1990X. Hey folks, it's Mr. Hat. I gotta say, it's good to be seen. Holy shit. That was startling. I love Mr. Hat. I love the noise he makes. He certainly makes an impression. <laughs> Good. The amazing Mr. Hat is now in my inventory. I think it's probably enough for today. Sorry to ask you so much all at once like that. It's okay. After all, we're family. I just hope you're ready. The right talent agency opens tomorrow. I'm sure there's something you're good at. Well, when you put it that way... You mean you don't have any tricks? No standbys? A boy should always have a trick or two in his pocket. I agree with this. I'll think of something. This is when he learns to play poker. Welcome to the team, Daddy-O! Oh, She's so cute. Sometimes when magicians vanish, they leave something behind. That's how Trucy became Trucy Wright, my daughter. To be honest, I was pretty lost those first few days. Ah! A lawyer playing a card game for a living. Well, when you put it like that... <clears throat> Whoa, we got a check mark for that one. Well, this looks different. I figured you'd come here sooner or later. Hey, you fucking prick. You ruined my life. Drew Misham, was it? I haven't done anything illegal. And I didn't come here to whine about past events. I wanted to ask you some questions. right, was it? I'll answer what I can. Hmm. Twelve-year-old Vera. Ah, this is my daughter. Vera, say hello. Okay. Uh, what the fuck is going on here? Judging from this place, you're a painter. Not, sadly, a profitable one. I've never sold a painting. It's a source of considerable embarrassment. I would be able to get by were it only me, your daughter. Her mother grew weary of me and left. I don't want her to grow up needy, Mr. Wright. That is why I began my other occupation. More than half the paintings they bring me are stolen. And who knows what my copies are used for. But some of your works aren't paintings, correct? You may not believe me when I tell you this, but that was my first work outside painting. To think it would be used as evidence in a murder trial. I never even imagined the possibility. And why did you take the job? I was well paid. Very well paid. Honestly, the sooner I can put this behind me, the better. With apologies to you, of course. Sorry, but it's not going to be quite so easy. Your work. Don't try to pretend you've forgotten. Sure, all you did was make a copy, but that copy might have destroyed the life of an innocent man. I'm responsible too, which is why I have to know. And you have to tell me. I knew it would be difficult to escape this. Then let's talk. Alright, cool. That was easy. <clears throat> well then. Ready to tell me about this work you did? It was unlike anything I had attempted before. I guess it would be a little different from paintings. Is not what I mean. In all my previous work, it sufficed to create a copy. This wasn't a copy? The client gave me two things that day. The first was a sample page as a reference, and the second was a printed document, which I can only surmise was written by my client. So you used the real writing as a reference to reproduce what the client wrote. Yes, as I said, it was my first job of that nature. So who was your client? 
As I said in court, I do not know. I never met them. Not personally, I... Oh! Two. Alright, so now we are at an impasse. Three Cyclops. Paints are scattered all around, probably the ones he's currently using. There's something very artistic about a messy room. Not that this is anything compared to my office. Is there anything in my office, a mess? Yes. Oh! Maybe I'll just slide on over here for a closer look. What the fuck? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the atroquinine, uh, stamp. Ah, uh, please don't touch that. Uh, I'll get in trouble. That stamp belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. Oh, that's Zach and Volant, the Grammariers, isn't it? The post office issued that commemorative stamp last year, when the Grammariers were at the height of their popularity. And more, but one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. And the other one is also gone. She's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time they came on TV until the end. That stamp's quite hard to come by, I hear. Still wonder how she got her hands on it. Interesting. Let's talk about this hand. That's a pretty bottle. Ah, uh, don't touch that. It's a bottle. There's a light pink fluid in it. Nail polish? Interesting. This is you and Vera? Yes, uh, we took that one quite recently. I'm a painter, why not paint a portrait instead? I've never been that good at people, unfortunately. Huh. Now, all this is the same. You use these gizmos for painting? They're pretty elaborate. Ah, uh, those aren't for painting. They're for analyzing. Paint composition, age, every conceivable angle. Tools of the forgery trade. And then here we have some paintings. There are some finished paintings stacked here. They don't look all that bad, really. I'll sell you one for 50 cents. That's okay. Maybe he needs to work on his sales technique a bit. Paints and pigments are lined up on the shelves with some noticeable gaps. It's embarrassing, but I can't afford all the paints I want. I insist on buying the ones I use with my own money. Perhaps you've heard that you can make any color as long as you have the three primaries? Well, it's a lie. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I mean, let's give it a shot. Behold my stand! Let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Misham? I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I never met the client. True, when I asked the client's name, there were no Cyclops in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Hmm, why are you doing this to me? Well, I've made my stand, no backing down now. So what's Misham hiding? Oh, we know it's the forger. I can pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. You told me what you knew about the client, and I couldn't see any psychlocks. Psycholocks? Why is he just telling him this? Uh, but then they did show up, didn't they? Ah, it's the I never met him. 
<clears throat> That's the operate term here, not personally. So you didn't meet with the client, but someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence. Perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business, but I'm afraid you've lost me. Got one of them. Well, I didn't come here to talk about psych locks. As long as I come to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is... The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Misham. Poppycock. I don't know what you're talking about. That's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who else could it have been but me? That's the real question, isn't it? If the forger wasn't you, then I don't have many other people to choose from. Well, we get to cheat with this one because we already know because we exist in the future simultaneously. All right, let's go. It's Vera, isn't it? Ridiculous. My daughter's 12 years old. I've always been more one for landscapes, not surrealism. Let's <laughs> come back. You're shaking in your boots. The only two people with access to the studio are you and your daughter. The Cyclops tell me you're not the forger, which makes your daughter the only possibility. I feel very much on the verge of going psycho lock myself. Let's go. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page was my daughter, Vera, not I. She's only 12, a genius, you might call her. A precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around recently. I let her play in the studio and she watched me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and analytical devices I bought when they became necessary. They're my little girl's playthings now. So Vera was the one who made this page. Would she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once here to the studio. But their face was covered and they did not want to talk to me. So they talked to your daughter? I will speak only with the artist, the client told me. Little girl might know something about him. All right, let's talk to Vera. Okay, uh, let's talk to Vera. It's Vera time. Mr. Misham, I have a request. Let me guess, you'd like to speak with my daughter. Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy. With only one exception, which was, oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished, and she was laughing. It was the first time I'd seen anything of the sort. All right. Hello. <laughs> Vera, was it? Uh, would you like to have a friendly chat? Uh, I'm Phoenix Wright, ex-lawyer and pianist. I'm looking for the keys that say do re mi. I can't find them anywhere. Oh my god. Okay, I need to present something. Well, let's try the same piece of evidence that worked on her dad. Uh, what do you think about that? Okay, it's not that. Oh, the, the uh, commemorative stamp. My stamp. Hey, she spoke. She can talk. Yeah, the stamp. Great magicians, aren't they? Isn't Troop Grammarier amazing? Ah. Oh, oh. I especially like Zach and Volant. They're just so magical, aren't they? <laughs> oh, good. All right. Whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, whoa, magic. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Me too, me too. I love them. They're so cool. It's like, like magic. Yes. All right. Okay. We got it. I went and saw them with father the other day. The opening ceremony at the Grammarier Museum of Magic. They have a museum? I guess it makes sense since they have their own commemorative stamp. Have you been to one of their shows? Just once when I was little with father. Okay. The Grammarier is on stage. It was like a dream. Disappearing, reappearing, cutting apart, putting back together. They do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can keep telling me stuff like this. About Zach and Volant? Oh, sure. Okay. We are... We're in. <clears throat> Father gave this stamp to me, but I asked him about it, and he didn't know how you got it. Oh, uh, I guess I just took it. Yeah. Father got a letter from that person. That person? The letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the Grammarier's forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. Okay. So they were trying to get on her good side. Your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things. I really like painting a lot. 
Father is always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So you did this too? Oh yes, that was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing that I saw. But this was totally different. The pen slips and the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. Oh, okay. I don't go outside much. I like to paint in here. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, that's true. There's lots of good people, too. Uh, actually, I, I should tell you. She was almost kidnapped. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense. She said she went to the museum with you. Ah, yes. Actually, she was quite insistent on it. That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. A good luck charm for when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, apparently she received something. A gift. From the client, actually. She won't tell me what it was. Father, I told you to keep that a secret. <sighs> so you met the person that asked you to do this job, and you talked with them. Well, what's this about a good luck charm you received? Ah, damn. I can't talk about it. Uh, if I do, it won't work anymore. That's what I was told. I see. <sighs> damn, everyone in this family. All right, let's try it. We are just attempting everything out here. The client. You seem to trust this client a lot because they gave you this stamp. No, that's not why. They listened to me, to my problem. The problem that keeps her inside all the time. Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely have to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. Unless it's the stamp. Alright. See you later. <clears throat> I think defendant lobby we could do. This guy sucks. Well, you know who it has to be. It has to be Trucy. I've never seen that girl until just the other day. Mr. Meekins. <laughs> sir, that day, uh, she was here in the room, sir. But he wasn't. You mean you chased her into this room, not him? Sir, in my days as a police officer, literally days, I learned a thing or two. <laughs> All right. Just one thing. But it was how not to mistake a girl for a seven-foot-tall magician. Holy shit, he's the dumbest man ever. Did he get fucking donked by Mr. Hat? Are you kidding me? He got owned by Mr. Hat? <laughs> oh my god. What's that? Uh, this is Mr. Hat. Have you been to the Wonder Bar? So. It wasn't a waking dream, was it, sir? Come again? That night on stage, I saw a vision. 
Except it wasn't a vision. It was a hat. An amazing Mr. Hat. He really exists. Meekins is the greatest character in Ace Attorney, truly. All right, what the fuck? I remember it clearly. The, the details are a little vague. Zach Romerier exited the courtroom. I gave Chase a court. Hello? Is something the matter, mister? Uh, no, that is, I'm chasing a suspect, sir. Zach, do you know him? I love him. His magic is the best. I'm his biggest fan. I see. Anyway, he came to this room, but no one's been in here except me. But he has to be in here, under the sofa, in the trash can, behind the painting, under the rug. So, Trucy was his accomplice. Um, imagine my shock when I just happened to walk into a bar and see him, Mr. Hat. God, I love him. He's so fucking stupid. <clears throat> Though it seems complex, what happened that day was quite simple. You were standing by the door, and out came Zap. But that wasn't all. Another person got in on the act, and she was standing in front of lobby number two. Along with Mr. Hat. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? So... While you are standing in shock and amazement, the magician rounds the corner, most likely runs through the closest door, Lobby 1, and then you see her at Lobby 2. Then all she has to do is tuck away the amazing Mr. Hat. This guy sucks. Are we done with Meekins? I'm sorry, I had no idea how much you'd suffered on account of this case. It's an honor, sir. I've apologized to people many, many times, sometimes more than once, but this is the first time anyone's ever apologized to me. Uh, about the girl, I'm sort of her guardian now? Sir, you should know that I harbor no ill feelings whatsoever in my harbor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Meekins, this is a free ticket to the show at the Wonder Bar. If you want, it's an honor, sir. God, this guy is truly wild. All right, we did it. Well, only two places to go. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, let's go to the Borscht Bowl. Do you know who I am? Just kidding, I don't do requests. How about a different sort of request? You see, I play cards. Oh, a uh, customer. <clears throat> Joseph, why are you hanging around this place? You know what I thought about? I'm going to tell you, when I say, when I first saw this place, I said, these are Russian assets. Putin's up to no good. I agree, Joe Biden. Thank you. I was just hoping someone would come in and save me from a night at the Keys. I seek a true competition. I've heard the Borscht Bowl Club is the place for this. Now I see the rumor is true. And this is... A friend of yours? Holy guacamole, you're kidding me. Oh, no shot. Why is Brushel here? I play piano. Well, sort of. It's actually just a front for my real talent, which is playing poker. Don't ask me how I got started. I don't remember. But I'm good. Real good. It didn't take long for rumors to get around. 
Go to the Borscht Bowl Club if you want a real game. That guy's never lost. People don't come to hear me tickle the ivory. They come to watch me play cards. So he's already played one, right? Is this a CD poker club? No, it's a restaurant. We don't play for high stakes. There's no money involved. But real players carry cash, and they're always thirsty. It's a handy source of income for the club owner. Then let's compete. I'll take you to the room. The hideout, yes. But before we go, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shady Smith. Uh, this is actually not... Oh my god. It's Zach, right? It's Zach Grandmarie. But then why did Kristoff kill him? that explains why he has the locket. Oh, and I'm Brushel. That's okay, dog. I don't need to know that. No, no, Phoenix Ray. You must always look a man in the eye when you make your introductions. You still do not know who I am. Have we met? Oh, he knew! <clears throat> oh my god, and now he's actually dead. You can't be. <laughs> but you're Zack? The reincarnation act of the century. Pity I have only an audience of one. You. Y you there. Ada. We will play soon. Ready the room. I will be preparing the hideout for you. Are you really him? The Zack Grammarier? Now I am Shady Smith. Remember this. How many years has it been? Six? Exactly three days from now, it will be seven. I caused you much inconvenience, I fear. Yeah, you could say that. Is she well? Trucy, I mean. She's fine. I've got her working already. I hope you don't mind. I hardly need to express my gratitude, but you have it. This is why I have come. That and to settle a matter of cards. By which you mean poker. I despise losing above all else, and so I have decided that I will win tonight no matter what it takes. Okay. Perhaps we should take this time to talk before we play. All right, let's 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 talk. We competed that day seven years ago, too. Yes, you must have been surprised. Called to the detention center out of the blue. Shows your defense attorneys by playing poker. Some are hired, others fired. When you compete, you see a man's true nature. You know what I speak of. I know that you do. Trucy's power? She is in a class of her own. For seven years, I've played poker here at the Borscht Bowl Club, and I've never lost once. I'm good, but not that good. I win because whenever there's a big game, I bring in Trucy. And she sends me signals. What is her power? Judging a person's thoughts by reading their reactions is a staple of performance magic, but those of Trucy's line possess a far greater skill. Recall, you were the second man to whom I've lost. Magnifique Grammarier? That was the first time I learned of this power, as you call it. Wait, so you're saying her power is genetic? It's just in the Grammarier blood or something? Blood. Jesus, everyone with the fucking Cyclox. When I planned my disappearing act, it was the thought of her alone that gave me pause. Wait, you were planning on vanishing from the get? Yes, and for that I must apologize. However, I could not be found guilty that day because of this. A transferal of rights. You see the signature? That's Magnifi Grammarier's signature, isn't it? Oh my god.
that was the torn page. <clears throat> That's incredible. The greatest of Magnifici Gremier's illusions are true art, as such they are well protected by this document. Only its bearer may perform his illusions on stage. As the rightful heir to his art, I too wanted a rightful heir. I'm sure you know who I chose as my successor, Trucy. That is why I have risked all to come here tonight. Brushel. A letter passing the rights I have inherited to Trucy. I would have you sign here as a witness. But I'm not a lawyer anymore. And you need a notary. Ah, I may not look it, but I'm a notary. This is true, though. Uh, every, like, twelfth person on the street is randomly a notary. By day, I wear a notary's glasses and hunt for news. Also, by day, I wear a reporter's glasses and notarize. When I take off the glasses, I can't see very well. Well, now we know why Brushel's here. There's a law that covers your situation. After seven years, missing persons are considered legally deceased. So if someone was to vanish from the face of the earth seven years ago, they would lose all rights as a living person after seven years from that day, not to mention all of their possessions. Exactly, which is why I am here. I risk showing my face in public for the sake of this document before my seven years are up. You might say, I am securing my daughter's inheritance. You, do you really need this document? Wouldn't Trucy inherit your estate automatically? Ah, no, uh, because we never, right. Before Magnifici died, two potential successors to his repertoire were named, myself and Volant. Not Trucy. I see. So you need the document to prove... Okay, D this is just a long story letting you, the viewer, know, do not die intestate. Write a fucking will. It is as you say. Okay. Well, how do you feel about this locket that you are wearing? <clears throat> how did you come by this? T Trucy has it. She said her mother was gone. Then it is so. She is gone. What more is there to say? I know. Oh my god, Brushel is still here. Trucy's mother, Magnifique Grammarier's only daughter, end quote. Whoa. Brushel. That's why Trucy has this power. In any case, Mr. Wright, this discussion is over. And then he loses and gets bad. <laughs> then let us begin. Dealer, you will be witness to our competition. Gavin, I believe was his name. You know him? 
After a fashion? Listen, Phoenix Wright. One can learn much from a true competition. Remember this. Wait, we didn't get to unlock his psych lock. Oh yeah, it's not done. Oh shit. Well, well, well. Isn't this an unexpected surprise? This man's got a bookcase. What errand brings you down to my cramped confines? Gavin. Well, Phoenix? You too, Gavin? Really? Life has been full of surprises for both of us. I've no doubt you never expected to lose that attorney's badge of yours. I'll bet you never expected to wind up here. Shady Smith was the name of the man you killed. Did you know who he really was? Who he was? Zach Grammar, the defendant. I remember him, of course. But you say Smith was Zack? Impossible. What did I just say? Life is full of surprises, don't you think? After that trial, you were arrested and found guilty, but your motive was never made clear. A mistake I plan to remedy. You're not an attorney anymore, Phoenix Wright. What possible conclusion do you think this investigation of yours can lead to? I killed a man named Smith with a bottle because I am an evil human being. Isn't that enough? You recall that case seven years ago? Ah, yes. The trial where Zach Grammarier pulled his famous vanishing act. My brother won his fair share of praise and adoration from that trial, as I recall. Genius prosecutor reveals crooked attorney, was it? It was when I met you, wasn't it? Was it now? The Bar Association's review board voted unanimously for the strictest punishment. Unanimous save for one dissent, yours. It was my brother who was responsible for putting you in that position, after all. For seven years we've been friends. And yet, I still don't understand you. But right, your friendship toward we, me was never pure. You suspected me then, as you do suspect me now, don't you? Honestly, right now, I'm not sure what I think. Then yeah, Jane, thank you for the sub. You didn't just brain a guy with a juice bottle for no reason. Tell me why you did it. Persistent, aren't you? I came here because I remembered something. The night of our game, Zach Grammarier mentioned your name, Gavin. After that, he was killed, and I asked you to help me, because I remembered your kindness back when everyone had turned on me. I have to know. Why did you kill him? Why did you kill Zach Grandmarie? You can't hide anything from him. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Something wrong, right? You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Life is to be taken easy, you know. We legitimately, we, we cannot unlock it. <laughs> Whoa, that's cracked.
right, well. Uh, we don't know what the good luck charm is yet. This is this is the last one that we do, right? Oh, you could still examine. It's been so long. You're thinking, what self-respecting man would use nail polish? Not really. I know appearances are a big thing with you. You know what I say? One cannot live a beautiful life without beautiful nails. First rate in all things, except nothing less. Certainly does look like first rate nail polish. I like the sparkly bottle. It's crystal. If you're so drawn to it, please have one. It's on me. Well, that resolves one of our problems. It's strange, you know. Here I am in solitary, and yet the books keep piling up. Looks like you've got more than books up there. Ah, yes, my collection. I have a few friends on the prison staff. They show me a little kindness. A violin? What's going on here? The yellow envelope! It's not nice to peek at other people's mail. You get mail here in jail? I do, though they read it first, apparently. Still, I am allowed the pleasure of correspondence. Packages and the like are a different matter, however. The piss envelope. That's some chair. And here, a comfortable chair is the most valuable thing in the world. You'd have to add two digits to the price of the standard prison issue chair for this. Nice roses. You taking care of this one here? Ah, yes, she's surprisingly delicate, you know. Requires careful tending. But she is my best friend, as they say. Of course, she's known to bite if handled roughly. Your rose? I was speaking of the photo next to the rose. My retriever, Von Gold. Cute, but feisty. <clears throat> well, I don't know where she is, so. Well, I figured it out. Let's talk, Vera. Stand of power! All right. I love to time travel and bring evidence back and forth. This was what they gave you, wasn't it? Ah. The same bottles over there on your desk. Your good luck charm, right? I heard once, cosmetics were once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. Of course it does. I think I know who gave you that bottle, actually. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client? What the fuck? Oh, here he is. This man is a friend of mine. Know him? His name is Christoph Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I, I promised. I promised not to tell. Got her. Ah, child's psyche destroyed. I'm sorry. I can't talk about the client. I promised. And if I break my promise, the spell won't work. That's fine. You don't you're pretty confident in this charm, then. I think they might be the devil. Or maybe an angel? What do you mean? I saw it. Or I think I saw it. When they gave me this. I saw the devil's face. Are you saying the client's face looked like the devil's? No, the client was gentle with a gentle smile. So where'd you see the devil? It was so quick. I don't remember it well. But that's when I knew. That person wasn't like other people. That's why I believe in my good luck charm. Interesting. Well, I think that's all. Bye. Fuck you, Drew Misham. <clears throat> Did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes, they're sad, very sad. I'll put on my smile next time I come, promise. I hope to see you smile then too. Oh, okay. Take care. He is so good with kids. Thinking back on my first encounter with the young forger, I witnessed something of vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late. One more down. Give me the check mark. 
easy. All right, to the present. Shit, we can't go to these other ones. <clears throat> this is going to be the last thing we open, if we ever open it. Don't think we can do... Did you do the lock with Zack? Yeah, that's what I'm going to try to. I thought this was going to be the last one. But we'll try it. Or, uh, Valon. He's got four. I mean, that's crazy. One of these fucking wizards. I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this one. There must be a path leading from the evidence to the truth. That's what I'm going to find. To ask someone to take a life, even one not long for this world, that's asking someone to commit murder. Yes, our mentor was fond of dramatic moves, dramatic finales, and he got his wish. His life was taken. What weakness could be so powerful as to coerce someone into committing murder? My guess is it was a matter of life or death. Care to explain? Your troop lived in a world of showmanship. The flashier, the better. And flashy so often means danger, doesn't it? If you have proof of this danger, then show it. Fuck. come back here. <clears throat> no, I don't think we have it. I don't think we have it yet. Only other one place, only other, only, there's only one other place we can go. <sighs> this guy's only got three locks. Maybe. Let me redo this. I have to know more about this power of Trucy's. It's like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw her do it, it blew mine. And after you were done having your mind blown, you took her to play cards with you. I gotta use the resources at hand, I always say. Yet I myself have no such power, but Trucy does. Why is that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother. Thalassa Grammar. I will not speak of it. She's officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Because you had sex with her. Well, Mr. Zack, let me be frank. It is true I do not wish to talk of her. And now, there's another I could care less about. You! Ah, fucking Christ. Okay. Why would he not want to talk about her? <clears throat> because he shot her to death with the pistol. Because Mr. Hat cucked him. I don't know. I'm truly... Uh, we're not here yet, are we? Here, I'll... I'll I, I will ask for help here. <clears throat> Do we have the material to complete this section? No. Okay, thank God. Saved me 20 minutes. Yes, just cheat. Uh, I guess I haven't examined the Borscht Bowl Club, really.
Ah, my grape juice. This is grape juice? Is it refreshing? I usually drink too much and it ends up making me thirsty. Mr. Wright, there is something inside that bottle. It's my business card. You aren't surprised at all. Perhaps you don't like magic? Okay. How do you feel about this shit, you stupid motherfucker? <clears throat> How about this stupid fucking thing that you fucked me with? Nope, nothing. And he is not helpful. I feel like there's something here I'm missing. Okay, second question, chat. Do I have the material to do the Volant Cycloc? Yes! Jesus Christ! I'm just way far back. <clears throat> Alright, Volant, let's make it happen. Okay, let's let's think here. Okay. The danger. Let's I guess let's try out the gun. Oh, <laughs> bada bing! That's one of ours. Specially designed for your show, I gather. A single bullet, one shot. What are you suggesting? We are magicians, Mr. Wright, not murderers. I'm not crying murder, Mr. Valant. I'm crying something far more tragic. An accident. How long has it been since those shots were last heard? Was the shoot'em cancelled because someone might get hurt? Of course, what other reason could there be? It could have been cancelled because someone did get hurt. Fascinating, my Faustian forging friend. But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? Well, tell me what would have happened if there had been an accident. What if one of your bullets took a life on stage? The performance of magic is not concerned with what ifs, it is concerned with precision. Precisely whom do you claim we shot? Okay. What? I have no idea. Damn, how do I, I... I think it's the the wife. But I don't know how to present the wife. Oh. But that's... Zach Grammarier's wife and Trucy's mother. Thalassa, I believe, was her name. Ah! Alakazag! I got one. But how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of our bullets? Okay. Thalassa was at the greatest risk of being shot, and this clearly shows just how much danger she was in. This is the fucking stamp. <laughs> it's the stamp because she's in between them on the stamp. Oh my goodness. Oh god. There's Thalassa. Yes. Trucy's mother is missing, I hear. What happened to her? Uh, I don't know. Okay, here we go. There's one thing you're failing to address. What's that? 
As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But Mr. Wright, then he would have hit a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. Found the right address, Mr. Wright? Prove why Thalassa's accident tied your hands so completely. Okay, well, I've got it. The accidental descent tied both of your hands, and this information proves why he held so much power over you. Because his daughter is the rightful heir of it. You by any chance trying to threaten me? No, of course not. You'll never make a good blackmail artist. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Who was she? Meekins had so much power. Not Meekins. Magnifici had so much power because. It's his daughter. How do I prove that? Oh, I proved it. Thalassa herself was the problem. She was Zach Grammarier's wife, Trucy's mother, and Magnifici's daughter. Oh my god. There was a terrible accident, and, only, and the two of you killed the mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to the power over you, I don't know what was. It was an accident! I... Man, I know he's the killer, but I just can't help but feel a little bad for Valent. There's no proof, none at all, but the Lasso went missing, and your mentor blackmailed both of his disciples. It doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Ours was a complex family. The master, Magnifici, and his only daughter, and his two disciples, does sound like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? Don't be tempted into faulty flights of fancy. Yes, there was an accident. That is all it was, an accident. Zack and Valance tour de force. The guns blaze, the bullets fly, straight toward the beautiful body on stage, and then crash Zing Pao into everything but her. That is magic. It happened one day when we were practicing. Same trick with a new twist. And tragedy. Oh my god. But as for whose bullets stole Thalassa's life, we never knew the answer. He disappeared from our lives, and Zack was bereft of his wife. Trucy lost her mother. And Magnifici, his daughter. And that led to blackmail, I take it. It is all part and parcel of the darkness that comes when the curtain falls. Why did Magnifici try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died. All I can say is it was a critical time for the troop. The passing of the torch from Magnifici to Zack and Volant. They all sacrificed so that it might be a success. Velasa's death was the greatest sacrifice of all. Yet, even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. In time, we found we could no longer oppose his wishes. He forced us to perform his art for his benefit see. I mean, he did lose his only daughter. But do you not find cowardice in his actions? To decide to hide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing, but to hang the death as a guillotine above our heads. Jesus Christ. Does Trucy know? She was not told. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry to dredge up old memories. This has helped a lot. Not to find his slayer, I should think. After that accident, there was one who came sniffing quite persistently. A reporter called himself a newsman at the time. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room doing his research. Did you happen to remember his name? What was his name? Brushel? Sorry, I have forgotten. But in the course of his interview, he came quite close to my partner, Zach. I liked him not. His name, I do not recall, but his scent. The aroma of mint. It was far too often. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
You will not uncover answers, only wounds. Sheesh. That's rough. That's rough, buddy. We have defeated the past. Oh shit, that's everything. Awesome. <laughs> Can I ask what you're doing here? Mr. Michonne was poisoned and his daughters... Oh yes, I know. Oh, how I know, yes. It's caused me no end of grief, to be honest. Journalist wishes he tracked down case just a little quicker. End quote. Were you on the trail of this case the whole time? Zach Grammarier was a good friend. He said something to that effect back at the Borscht Bowl Club. What a character, what a man. If a little... No, a lot. No, extremely rough around the edges. Do you think I could ask you a few questions? You serious? I'm usually the interviewer. Please. Alright, so it was tragic what happened to Drew and his daughter. Forgery's a serious crime and they paid the price. You know what really did him in though, don't you? Yes, the diary page. The night I interviewed him, I found out something about Mr. Mishama I hadn't known. You know, I always felt like he was being watched. Every day for seven years, walls have ears, potatoes have eyes, end quote. Interesting. No, no, I'm not talking about feelings here. You know, I felt watched too. The whole time I've been on this case, no less. Journalist gets tingling sensation on back and neck, freaks out, end quote. Because you felt guilty. Why would I feel guilty? Hmm. I met Zach through that case, actually. Well, before that, it's not widely known. You mean the accident during the quick draw shooting practice? My, 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 you're well informed. You should have seen me back then. I dug up quite the scoop. I wanted it all money, fame, women, a little puppy, all for me. I was younger then, and my days and nights smelled a fresher mint than they do now. Volant did mention, a nosy reporter. In fact, I was on close speaking terms with Magnifique at the time. I knew his daughter, too, of course. The Lhasa, was it? Really? Then she disappeared, quite suddenly at that. He wouldn't say a word about it. Journalist catches scent of a scoop, goes on feeding frenzy, end quote. I set up a one-on-one -on -one with her husband, Zach, and something strange was in the air over Troop Grammarier in those days. The whole screwy mentor-controlling disciple scene started by then, I'm guessing. The Lhasa, she was part of it all, right? You can tell me, off the record. Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, I kept prying and eventually became friends with Zach. Sure, he punched me once or twice, but five times, but over time, he came to see me as his confidant. Drew Masham felt like he was being watched, and you along with him. You sure it wasn't just nerves? Nerves? No, it's nothing so mundane. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago, but I felt it too. Don't you wonder why Zach got rubbed out after seven years? Right after coming into contact with me? He completely vanishes from that courtroom. Then for seven years, he talks to no one. Then just as the remaining time was almost up, he contacts me in order to have this made, and then he dies. Maybe not just me. Maybe you, too. He's been waiting this whole time. Seven years, huh? For his big comeback, of course. A big revival of the Magnifique Miracle. Of course, it was all a dream. Because of this. Of performance rights. In the absence of any official documents, he was golden. Who's to say the old man doesn't give his rights to both Zack and Volant? So Volant waited until Zack died. Legally, at least. The time finally comes, and Volant's like a kid on Christmas morning. He's getting ready for his show at the Sunshine Coliseum. That document sees the legal light of day. It's going to put a bit of a damper on the big show. He's a sorry one, that Volant. Lost out to his partner at work and in love, too. Same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. What has three sides and all of them pointy? A triangle! Okay, yep. Russell, you were very helpful. You know, I have really done a 180 on Brushel. Well, this is a blast from the distant past. 
Long time no see, Mr. Volant. Seven years has it been. Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I want to ask you. I've spoken to the press. I have nothing more to say. I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions, but then I realized I need to hear it from you. I have walked a difficult road these past seven years because you couldn't perform Magnifique's repertoire. Do not be deceived. Volant's skill is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-to-me-downs. No, it was my partner who slowed me on my way. His rather well-performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or so I thought. Zach Grammarier murdered our mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crime. You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember it as if it were only yesterday. Yet that was not the way of it in the end. For a while after he vanished, the suspicions on my own person never did. His partner Zach vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of a press said. I had no idea. Yet that very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. They covered the greatest mag magic show in history as if it were a vaudevillian distraction. And here must I stand, smiling at them all. What am I if not a player in some fiendish farce? Magnifique's death is still a mystery to this day, which is why I came here to get the answer from you. <sighs> we can do whatever. Yeah, two. Easy. Just fire it. For seven long years I have endured. Now, finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. The miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Volant, but right now I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. Volant, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. And what might that be? I see it bears the Grammarier seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner, but I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnifique's miracles. Zack! He wrote this? He passed everything to his daughter? Trucy Enigmar. Actually, she's officially my daughter these days. Preposterous. Zack is gone, vanished into the void. This is the genuine article. He was alive when he wrote it. Both myself and the notary can testify. Oh, there's one. He still has the same animation. Uh, Kiri456, thank you for the year. Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived enthralled to the dead? He shot Magnifique! It was Zack! It was! And then he left, and my career as a magician fell into darkness. Do you think there might be some way out of it? See if you could prove Zack had shot him? Was that why you testified? Yes! <laughs> my way out! It should have been my way out. Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Volant. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnifique Grammarie? I legitimately don't know this one. This one, I, chat, I don't have the material, right? I do? Oh God. You don't, okay. You, you do, you don't, you do, you don't. You know the answer. I know that it's uh, Gavin. It has to be, but I don't know why. Let's let's get swooshing around. <sighs> hey, remember when we did this?
Okay, I think I know the grammar yay secret at this point. I know why you don't want to talk about her. Because she got fucking killed. The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already know this. <sighs> At your peak, you were the biggest stars around. Yet there's another story behind the fame. One that not many know. Thalassa lost her life during a rehearsal. To you and Volant, Grammar Ye's bullets. It was an accident. It, it wasn't me. How could I shoot my own dear Thalassa? I'm sure Volant would say the same thing. It's just like another murder I might mention. Her eyes. I loved her eyes. To think they could read my mind was frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that felt like an embrace. She is dead, and Magnifici has joined her. So the only one with her power is Trucy. Mr. Zack. I do not know. So there's someone else. Someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited her power. Ha! How would I know? It'd take a miracle to learn the truth. There may be one who's already inherited. There is someone else with the power. And it's Apollo Justice. This boy? His name is... I forget. Something weird. Who could he be? An attorney. I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's law offices. So what are we to make of this, oh great ex-attorney? You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like. But you could at least say something like, I'm this boy. I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Thalassa. It's more of a ring. Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence showing this missing link. God damn it, she has a ring that I need to go get. Fuck! Uh, where is the goddamn ring? Oh, It's like a bracelet? Uh, Alright, whatever. Do the locket where that fails, we'll go find the ring. Okay. Bap, 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 bap. All right, let's... let's go find the ring. It's not in here. Let's check solitary cell 13. Not in here. Let's check Drew's studio. I know what I need, but I don't know where to get it.
Is it an examine chat? It's gotta be. No. Where the fuck am I getting this ring? This fucker knows about it. Hey, you stinky dinky. How do you feel about this? The only other guy I can think to talk to is, uh... Is Sunshine Coliseum. <clears throat> Man, I just... All right, let's try it out. <clears throat> Magnifique's death. Ask what you will, you'll get nothing from me. All right, asshole, come on. For seven long years I have endured. Now finally the curtain lifts on my new golden age. The miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Volant, but right now I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. I feel like I've already done this. I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. We show him the transferal of rights. And what might that be? I see it bears the Grand Marier seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnifique's tricks. He passed everything to his daughter? Trucy. Preposterous! Zack is vanished! This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote it. Both myself and the notary can testify to this. The notary spark brushel. Alright, get one of those out of here. Okay. He shot Magnifique! It was Zack! It was! And then he left, and my career as a magician fell into darkness. Did you think there might be some way out of it? If you could prove Zack shot Magnifique... Was that why you testified? Yes! Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Volant. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who killed Magnifique Grammarier? Oh, fuck. Well, I know who it is. It was Gavin, but I don't know why. fuck do I... No, of course not. <sighs> uh, not Gavin, sorry. Uh, his stupid fucking brother. I think I actually don't have 
I, I, I don't have this, do I? Chat, I, I'll... Let me know. Do I have it? No, okay. Let's not waste any more time here. This explains why we stopped here. Okay, so we've just got a couple of these that are still open. Sunshine Coliseum. Actually, we finished none of the ones in the future. Interesting. All right, let's try the Grammarier secret. We might have this one. <clears throat> Trucy's power. Trucy got her power from her mother. I will not speak of that. She's missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Because you shot her. Okay, we've already done this one, which is why it's loading. Obi Senpai, thank you for the sub. Alright, here we go. So there's someone else other than Trucy. Someone who inherited the power. Oh, fuck! I accidentally hit this one. So Apollo Justice also has the power. You could tell because of his stupid fucking bracelet. There's a link between the boy and Thalassa that's more of a ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just happen to have evidence showing this missing link. Okay, so I don't have this either, right? Okay. Christ. We've already examined everything. There's nothing left to examine. And we can't break this one. God, why did I click this cutscene? Jesus. Spark, tell me you know something. <laughs> Sometimes life just sucks. I gotta agree. Why is this guy pointing? done this. Oh my god. God. I love Spark Brushel. He is so great. paintings. Uh, the 
coffee. The... I guess that's it. Oh, we could check the letterbox. The door. The door outside. Vera might come walking in at any moment if she wasn't in intensive care. And... That's it. Damn, that's rough. Okay. Let's check our, uh, our evidence. Crime photo. Autopsy report. Notebook page. That's, uh, the fake one. The IV report. The chart. The syringe. Mr. Hat. This is nice. Hello? That's interesting. I don't think you'll ever get this one because it's a little silly. No, I'm going to get it right now. Take this, Mr. Hat! Take this, the nail polish! didn't help. Take this, Trucy's locket! <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'd never forget his wife. Thalassa Grabarye. Do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, why the heck not? Alright. Thanks, Brushel. You're a grushel. Married Zack and had Trucy. It was her second marriage, actually. You mean she was divorced? I hadn't heard this one before. Not quite. Her late husband was a performer, too. He died in an accident on stage. Tragic, really. They had only been married one year. Oh. Oh. Why do you have this? What does that mean? Thalassa has another child besides Trucy, end quote. But Trucy said she was an only child. Ah, yes, this one she had with her previous husband. Her first husband who died on stage? Yeah, they had themselves a kid. Another orphan now. That's another one who slipped through the cracks. No idea where they are now. Had another child? Do you think I could borrow the photo? Sure, I can be generous on occasion, you know? Alright, so we know that it's... We know that it's, uh... It's Apollo, because we guessed it. Oh, is he leaving? I was just wondering what Magnifi would think of all this. Haven't you seen it in Trucy? She's got his power. It was the same with Magnifi and with his daughter. Man, Brushel has been so forthcoming. It's a strange thing. I think it's some Grammarier game. Magnifi told me once. Whoa. He said Zack had good eyes, but not good like a Grammarier's eyes. Not that good. Zack. The 
the plot had finally begun to reveal itself. Okay. Three more, chat. I have never done a 180 on a character like Brushel. All right, let's go talk to Shady Smith. All right. The Borscht Bowl Club. Are you dumb fucking bitch? Check this out. I have a picture of your wife! Mr. Zack, could you tell me about this? Oh, that didn't work. How about you, Volant? Nope. Hmm. Well, there's only one other guy we can talk to. I mean, we can't go back to the old ones, can we? They're done. Huh. Well, that was cool, but didn't get us any closer to the truth. All right, we got two of these. Let's let's give him a crack again. Three, come on. The grammar yay secret. Blah 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 blah. You don't want to talk about her because you shot her. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. So there's another power. Here here we go. It's it's Apollo. Oh, well, this is the only new thing we have. So let's try it out. Your marriage to Thalassa was her second. Oh, thank God. How did you know this? Her first husband died a year after they were wed. Yes, he was a performer. They met when he joined us Grammariers as a guest in our show. After Thalassa wed him, she left the troupe for a while. And you say she had a child. I have a photograph of her here. She has the same stupid thing that I couldn't help notice what she was wearing when I first saw this. The bracelet. They are Grammarier family heirloom. This boy wears a bracelet just like the ones in the picture. So, that's why. Why what? I took this photograph of Thalassa before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. I bet I know where the other one went. She gave it to this boy, her son. All right. Oh, good. For some reason that counted for two. Let's go. And all our health is back. All right, let's talk about the Grauier secret. Now we're getting somewhere, chat. Now we're getting somewhere. This strange power. I myself do not know where it comes from. Yet the fact that it is passed down the Grammarier line, it runs in their veins. What is it? I asked her, Thalassa, once. This is what she told me. She's told me, stop asking about my secret power. 
Her power responds to tension in others. Okay. Tension. If she were to face a person and they became tense, even slightly, she would know no matter how hard they tried to conceal it. So she could see it. Not quite. This is the strangest part of it all. It's a perception. She won't realize that she was subconsciously detecting the tension without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects, which are the bracelets. Okay. I have made a decision. I will tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. Whoa! Okay. Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two are brother and sister, yes. And the brother, too, has this power. So Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Mr. Wright, tonight after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. No, we won't. I will not see her live her life without knowing. Okay. I am in your debt, once again. <laughs> no kidding. What I want to know is how this got to be so messed up. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. It is said to expand and shrink very slightly in response to body warmth. I see, so they're temperature sensitive. This is how they can shrink to the exact size of their wearer's wrist. It has something to do with the power. What have I told you? Gremerier power reacts to tension in others. When a Gremerier senses tension, they become tense. This tension translates, he's an empath! So minute, they cannot sense it on their own. Their muscles? Oh, so that's what the bracelets are for. With a bracelet on, one can sense the contradictions. Contractions. Because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So when the person they're watching gets tense, the bracelet feels tighter on their wrist. Precisely. But that doesn't really count as mind reading. There, it's a question of eyesight. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity. They say athletes can see a moving ball like it was stopped if they focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. Okay. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest twitch of the face and the meaning that lies behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. One must know the mind of a crowd before they may distract it. So what you're saying is, the Grammariers can see really well. For them, seeing is more than believing. It is knowing. Their power relies on eyesight combined with exceptional focus. Okay. So they have to do a ton of drugs. But what if someone could tell you when to focus or something? Right. But Trucy doesn't have any bracelets. You are talking about poker, yes? The timing of when to focus is so elementary, she probably does it without thinking. I doubt Trucy herself has realized this. That is all I know of things, Grammarier. Zach, you're helpful. I will tell you of that night. The night my mentor, Magnifi, passed from this world to the next. There were two pistols and two letters sent. This was Magnifi's test. In his last years, Magnifi Grammarier worked us to the bone, no, to the pain. But that night I could not shoot him, so I shot the clown's forehead instead. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this. I give my art to you, Zack. It is thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I would not have mind di minded dying by your hand. How could I shoot you? You're my mentor. Bah! I thought you might say that. If I went home without shooting anything, what would you have done then? Then, of course, I would have given Volant his chance. And if I had shot you in the forehead instead, then it would be over. If you or Volant were to shoot me in the head, then I to the darkness would go, and my art with me. Fitting end, don't you think? Uh, yet this ending, too, gives me no cause for regret. I thank you, Zack. And I am sorry. I have done much that was wrong in my day. It seems that Magnifi wanted you to be his successor all along. That's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valance. Perhaps. But it's not something we will ever know for sure. I wonder. What is Valant up to, to these days? Waiting for you to die. If seven years pass, the performance rights go to him. Ah. And now here I am, and his dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually. Public opinion's a fickle thing, you know. You don't mean to tell me they've put the blame for our mentor's death on him? Yes, you asshole! <clears throat> well, 
Seems that before I can once again disappear, I have one more act to perform. Isn't it odd that sorting out my life should prove so complicated, even though I'm dead? What is he going to do for Volant? Wow, it is really unfortunate that he got fucking killed. He wrote a lie! He wrote a lie! Seven years passed. I, Zach Grammarier, murdered my mentor. I apologize for the trouble caused by my sudden departure from court and hereby confess to my crime. This is the nicest dude in the history of time. <clears throat> We're not doing this though. We're not gonna show this in court. All right, two left. We've got the material. Volant, I got one more thing I want to talk to you about. Don Fuckler. Okay, this part we've already done. Here's the transferal of rights document. I feel so bad for Volant. When I thought he had done it, I was like, what a crafty little fucker, but he is really just caught up in this. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> he shot- it was Zack! And then he left! Did you think there might be some way out of it? Was that why you testified? YES! Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Vallant. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who killed him? Well, guess what, asshole. It's not this guy, but I have his confession. I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zack Grammarier wrote one more thing before passing on. This is a confession in which he admits to the killing of Magnifi Grammarier. See? All according to your plan. I, I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. Oh, no. <laughs> now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have wrought upon myself. Zach wrote this right in front of me after I explained your situation to him. Alaka ZOMG. Awful. You do know that this confession is nothing but lies? Yes, it's my opinion that Zack killed no one. Then you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, then the one who remains is guilty. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. So he vanished to protect me, his partner. Ha. <laughs> a stirring tale, tis true. Did you shoot Magnifique Grammarier in the forehead? If I had and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, perchance? Do as you will. There is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor Magnifi's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed hold of me. So Volant did kill him? Huh. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright, but it was not- Oh, shit. But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There wasn't another disciple, was there? <sighs> I don't know. Knack and talent, Grammarier? Your wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Volant received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you figured it out by now. Who the fuck could it have been? He shot himself? Yes, the great Magnifi himself. So Magnifi committed suicide? find it hard to believe to be honest yes when i arrived that night the old man was still alive seeking snorlax thank you for the sub he appeared to be asleep i could not shoot him but when i turned and made to leave the room the old man called out to me so you spoke with magnifi yes and this is why i knew what he had done magnifi transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner zach not me see I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. My crime was, in a way, more serious than that of murder.
Oh, is this the thing that he dangled over their heads? You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There are no secrets between partners. It was easy to find out. That was when I understood his plan. He wanted to die by one of your hands. Little did I expect it had anything to do with the rights to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. A little demon whispering inside my heart. Let me confess, I had intended to shoot Magnify. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. That night, I prepared something before going to his hospital room. IV fluid, right. If Zack did not shoot, I would do the deed. Then I would use the IV liquid to place the murder on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. Then Magnify called me back. I'm sorry, Volant. I'm giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please help him if you can. I left the room, and then I stopped. The shock of what I had just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that fateful gunshot. Wow. And the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frame him and the magic will be yours. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped the prince, then I used the syringe to add the IV liquid I'd brought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. He died and you framed Zack for his murder. As planned, indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I had anticipated. Well, what do you think? If you believe my story, can it be believed truly? That, you're a fucking asshole. I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Volant. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're going to turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance rights, my magic. I've had enough of vanishing acts. Oh, no. What is he going to turn himself in for? Both these people are trying to confess to the same fucking crime! And now it occurs to me. What if he was not the only one who survived? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I, and we never saw proof of Thalassa's demise. We never saw her body. The mind races and the mouth flaps on. My apologies. Oh boy. All right, last one, here we go. I feel so bad for the piss wizard. Sorry, sir. Prisoner Kristoff Gavin is currently occupied. I see. While he's gone, let's grab this envelope. All right, here we go. Piss, envelope, piss, envelope, piss, envelope, piss, envelope, piss, envelope. If this is the last letter that Drew Misham wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do, in fact. Here goes. Let's see if this atracrinine spray finds anything. Got it. It's glowing like a fucking... So this was Misham's messenger of death. It was the stamp. No mistaking it. And his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. The interview request came like you said it would, and they're looking into the case. I swear in my life I won't tell them about you. So please release the spell you've put on my daughter. I didn't know you moonlighted in larceny, right? Gavin. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. There's not much I care to discuss. Baron Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? 
There are no known survivors of atroquinine poisoning, but it never hurts to hope. Right, wait. Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Many thanks. What is he up to? <laughs> We've now seen all the clues in this case. Clues I gathered over seven long years. Now it is time. We've come to the final chapter at the final trial. Find the truth. You're the only ones who can. All right. Time for Chords of Steel, baby. Welcome to court. Seven years, all leading to one verdict. A verdict which you must decide. Is the defendant innocent or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? Absolutely. Let's go! Something inside me. Rising. Surfacing. Something important, lost long ago. It's close now, so close. <sighs> Gavin! Acute atroquinine poisoning. According to her physician, she could die at any time. Fuck! If she dies, I'll be so mad. Thus her absence from this courtroom today. We should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic. It's being a little harsh. Can't delay the trial any longer or they risk having no one left to try. A trial without a verdict can only cause grief. The records of this case and experience tell us this. Apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Oh good, okay, we don't have to we don't have to find it out in court. We already know it. The prosecution's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Masham succumb to poison? Because she couldn't live with the guilt of what she'd done. Ga I am gonna fucking kill you, Clavier. Holy shit. Objection! I actually think she succumbed to poison because it's atroquinine, you dickhead. What better confession could you ask for? Being the killer, she could have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather... They're saying she is trying to kill herself? I have a million objections. The defense holds that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you have to prove something. She was in court, giving her testimony before us. How do you propose her killer poisoned her? I guess I don't really know that. And incidentally, it would be nice if you told us who her killer was. I actually know both of these. <clears throat> uh, let's do how. So you saw in that clip, there was one thing she touched that might have given her the atroquinine poison. Beautiful bottle. I'd like to give whoever designed that a hand. Shut up! Is it nail polish? It's colorless. Something the matter? Uh, no, nothing. Nothing at all. So the killer put poison in this bottle and made her drink it. As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this is nail polish. It's like paint for nails. My wife has red nails. I see. So she's been painting them all this time. 
<laughs> I love the judge. Let's recall yesterday's trial. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? She was biting her nails. Whenever she became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Prosecutor Gavin, when the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? Uh, well, I... Bailiff, have them check the defendant's nails at once. Mr. Justice, do you know who did this? In fact, I do. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. Why do you ask? Know someone else who might have a bottle like this? Uh, no, just checking. <laughs> Lying in court. Prison. Mr. Justice, you're about to accuse someone of poisoning the bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chatter. You realize the weight of the accusation. Let me show you. It's fine. Fucking make it bigger. Make it a, make it an Oko. Who poisoned Vera Misham? For some unknown reason, whoop! It was Kristoff Gang. What's this? Kristoff Gavin. What's your game? My bro, there's no way he could do a thing like that. You should know that better than anyone else. I don't know, he's in prison for killing. He is behind bars, I know. However, that doesn't mean it was impossible to do what he did. Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. It could have been yesterday. It could have been a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps... Seven years ago? Christoph Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl. Oh, I don't think that's true. Prosecutor Gavin doesn't seem to think so. He's sweating his dick off. That face tells me one thing. Christoph Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. Hmm. Well, Prosecutor Gavin, if you feel there is a clear and pressing need, then we may have to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurked at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay. The defense's wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph Gavin take the stand. Bailiff, begin proceedings to call a special witness. Alright, so here's the deal. Christoph Gavin tried to kill Vera in order to tie up a loose end by which he would uh, get Phoenix Wright ejected from court. Maybe for the benefit of making his brother like a, a star prosecutor. What I don't understand is how the Grammar Ye shit ties into this. I imagine we'll find out. Your Honor, how nice to see you again. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned from my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you already know, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Ah, Mr. Justice. I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. Yes. Does this bottle look familiar? Ariadone nail polish. Why, yes, I use it myself. As did the late defendant, I hear. She's not dead yet. And was there something concerning this bottle you wish to ask me about? I admit I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste, indeed. This nail polish was how she was poisoned. Atroquinine, was it? Even in solitary, much comes to my desk, and I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier? Maybe you can explain this. You're being accused again. By him. Again. Ah. Uh, and? You agree with his accusation, do you? He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. I've been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. The prosecution's case holds. She poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father, too. Indeed I am. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the Mashams. 
Isn't that so, Mr. Justice? Very well, Mr. Justice. Begin your cross X. Okay, here we go. God. Oh, fuck. And the br it's a bracelet one. Jesus Christ. Tell me, is this nail polish expensive? It's a nail polish of the highest order. Not only is it fabulously expensive, but it's made in extremely limited quantities. And you and Vera just happen to both use it. That can't be a coincidence. I'm guessing it's not a coincidence. It's simple. It's the best nail polish one can buy. So if one wanted the best nail polish, you'd buy it. Fuck. My brand name Gavel. Can you still make contact with the outside world in solitary? So he had an accomplice on the outside. Is this your accusation? I'm allowed a certain modicum of letter writing. But the contents of those letters are closely checked. It would be extremely difficult to send a hit request. Jesus. Her father died of the same poison, meaning of which should be clear. The defendant is not dead yet. There are no known cases of someone surviving it. You seem to know a lot about atroquinine. He's going to say, I was a defense attorney. I know a lot about a lot of things, which is why I suggest we pick up the pace. Or else you'll be short one defendant for what she's worth. Vera had no reason to want to commit suicide. And also, who would commit suicide by doing their nails? The answer is quite simple. The answer is quite simple. Uh, she couldn't live with her own guilt. Next, why did she use nail polish? This too is simple. So she could die doing something that she liked. Chewing her nails. I believe it's quite easy to bring poison into a courtroom. Just watch a different ace attorney. <clears throat> this is the easy one. Clearly. Mr. Misham was poisoned with atroquinine as well. That really can't be a coincidence. The defense is repeating fallacious statements based on conjecture. The prosecution requests concrete, unambiguous proof of the witness's crime. Get perceiving. I feel like he's baiting me into perception, though. One eye being slightly more open. I can't see his other hand. God, he looks fucking crazy in that one eye. Nothing here. Whoa, what the fuck is that? Holy shit! What the fuck is that? It was you who killed Drew Misham. A bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? But you see, I saw it. Right when you said her father, too. Your hand tensed unnaturally. 
a little devil appeared to give me the news. And? Let's assume for the sake of argument that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? Tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Ah. Then I must be very talented indeed. You see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th. I was already in my solitary confinement cell at Central Prison. If that's not an alibi, I don't know what is. But you found a way all the same. And I found it too. This is how you poisoned Mr. Michonne. My, my. And here I thought you'd come so far. Well, fuck! It's not really fair. I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Masham died, he was seen writing a letter. Atraquinine was found on this stamp, Mr. Gavin. So am I to understand this stamp was the murder weapon? Yes, you are. Oh, and yes, this stamp was found in your prison cell. <laughs> oh. Tifi, thank you for the sub. That is all, Your Honor. Wow, that was easy. Poison on the back of that stamp. After Drew Misham was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness's cell. Phoenix Wright. That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew Misham write you a letter, and that's how you killed him. My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spark Brushel's testimony. How does he know that? After he put his letter in the envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. A stamp. Postage stamp. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was a mere coincidence he used it that night. Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence? Indeed I do. How would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? Without that, he couldn't have planned the murder. I mean, it's just a matter of time. How could anyone have known Mr. Misham would use the stamp that night? Least of all, Christoph Gavin. Okay... I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, Kristoff. Cla- Clavier? <laughs> Honestly, I wanted to believe you. But the defense wasn't trying to get away with a bluff. You were, Kristoff. Or you were, Kristoff. What are you saying? Hair forehead. What was your accusation again? Ah. Uh, that this poison stamp killed Drew Misham. Yeah? To which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when he would use the stamp. Yes, that's right. Which is why it couldn't have been planned. Tell me. It needs to be planned. Why? Why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Misham died by the stamp. That's all. Christoph, you tried to slip out from under his accusation by changing the subject. That's not bluffing. What is it? What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Kristoff. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. But Mr. Gavin, that's impermissible testimony. Very well. I shall take his claim head on. Then. Justice. What? You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then allow me to ask you. What possible reason could I have to kill a painter? Are you kidding me? We have some great motives here. Why didn't he bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. So what does it mean? 
It means there might be a weak spot. Maybe I have some evidence to prove a motive. Okay, let's see. A motive for murder. This is a vital, if not the most vital element in the case. Please consider this when making your statement. Uh, thank you, Clavier. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. Let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Michon? <sighs> forged evidence, right? Let's try this. I want to show this evidence. Well, there's a couple of good reasons. The red envelope would be good. The notebook page would be good. Let's do the notebook page. Christoph Gavin's motive becomes clear when we consider why the stamp came to Drew Michon's studio in the first place. Forgery, Your Honor. Go back seven years. Drew Michon accepts his first job creating forged evidence. I've seen that before. A page from a diary, wasn't it? Magnifi Grammarier's diary. Ah, when attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge, yes, this was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes, but did Mr. Wright request the forgery be made? That was never proven. The defense attorney on the case was Phoenix Wright, who, other than him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it. And why would they? Just out of curiosity, do you remember this letter? <clears throat> this is the first page. And this is the second. Those were presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to Drew Michon by the client who requested that forgery. The enclosed stamp was none other than the poisoned commemorative stamp. Drew Michon drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was seven years old. Seven years old. The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. He tried to erase anything and any one with connections to the forgery to keep them from talking. But he made a mistake. The killer's time bomb was delayed. Poison stamp was sealed within a glass frame where it sat for seven years. God, if it had just been a more boring stamp. Hair forehead, do you understand what you're telling us? The one who schemed up the forged diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp, and it was Phoenix Wright who presented the forged evidence seven years ago. Adding the two statements together, the one who schemed to kill Drew Masham was Phoenix Wright. Well, I think we can work our way through this one. Sorry, but that's not how that's going to go down. Oh, then how will it go down? I checked through the records on that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. <clears throat> and one more thing. Files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. He didn't have time to request a forgery. Oh! Now here's a question. Just who was Shady Enigmar's previous defense attorney? Why are we not calling him Zack? No, this can't all be. But it is all true. There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. It was you, Christoph Gavin. Order, order, order. 
What is the meaning of this? Witness? I mean, defendant? A former lawyer? Let me begin by denying this. <laughs> it's easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin, and impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly did you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Objection! No. Hair forehead. Are you sure you don't have evidence? Evidence. Evidence that shows this man requested that forgery seven years ago. Just prove it! Oh my god! Clear up these doubts now, or I swear I'm off this case. What is going on? I guess we do. Yeah. Five minutes? Oh, I thought we had to be there at 12.45. Oh. Well, shit. We're, we're so close. Alright, uh, chat, I'm gonna... I'll take a short break, and then when we're done with this, we'll, I'll come back. It'll be probably in about an hour. Sorry, chat. I'll be back soon. You bought this game legally, right? Yeah, I ripped the ISO from it. Here we go. simply ridiculous. Why even discuss it? The evidence does not... Okay, here we go. Are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. Then. Then I say we give him the benefit of the doubt. But if you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. Objection. Your Honor, you do the defense and injustice. Mr. Justice is passionate about his claim. Should the penalty not match his passion... Oh, fuck! Ah. Any kind of link between Christoph Gavin and Drew Masham. Something that does the job. Okay. It's got to be the yellow. It's got to be this. This evidence proves there's a link. That scrap of paper... I'm afraid I can't let you submit that. Is there some problem? There is. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm? Mr. Wright's handwriting. I see. I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell, except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright? When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habit. Well, if it's a forgery, it's not a very good one. The handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. When Mr. Wright visited Christoph Gavin's cell, he brought with him a small video camera. He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin, and the contents of your personal mail. Oh ho ho! Regardless, this mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video of a man with no authority whatsoever over claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex-attorney suspected of forgery. Hmm. Prosecutor Gavin? Prosecutor. As embarrassing as this is for me to say, I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor, your decision, please. The defense's claim is denied. Fuck! Only actual evidence is permitted in a court of law. Remove the defense's evidence from the record.
fuck? We literally have nothing. Clavier? Only now do I understand why. Frankly, I'm relieved. This has been bothering me for seven whole years, and I'm tired of the whole youthful angst scene. Now's our chance. Let's clean out the family closet, eh, Kristoff? Clavier, you're spinning out of control. Calm yourself before you say something you'll regret. Spinning out of whose control? Mine or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor, your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. What the fuck? You amused me, Hair Forehead. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't. Not even once. Seven years ago. Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you, Hair Right? Resist what? Presenting evidence? Unnatural. Well, you did seem unusually well prepared. Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. And the next moment, you call in Drew Masham. It was almost as if... Almost as if... What? It was a setup? Funny, it didn't even occur to me to wonder. But now that I do, I see there's only one possible explanation. Almost as if, from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Correct. I knew that if I applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that forged diary page. Don't do this, Clavier. I knew because you told me. Whoo! Oh, man. It was the night before the trial. Clavier. Kristoff? Odd seeing you at the prosecutor's office a day before a trial. Ah, I won't be appearing in the trial, actually. I won't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently. But in exchange, I brought information. The attorney who will be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted. Don't even give him the benefit of your respect. Listen, I want you to call in a special witness. Then... I wondered about it at the time. How did Kristoff know so much? Kristoff. We were supposed to face each other in that trial. A fair fight, brother to brother. I deserve that much. You let me borrow the victim's belongings. You showed me your research on the case. My, my, Clavier. You disappoint me. You find trees, yet miss the forest. You can't sweep this under the rug. Not anymore. Tell me what was going on behind that trial. Why not? I've achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in a little reminiscing. Uh, okay... Seven years ago, the day before the trial, I visited the detention center at the request of my client, Zach Grammarier. Phoenix Wright, a second-rate attorney who relies on luck and bluffs. 
He dismissed me and went with that pitiful excuse of a man. He deserved to die for that error alone. Hold it! So the one who requested the forgery was... I'm not admitting to anything. My point is, these two men shamed me, and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Zach Grammarier deserved what they got. So you asked Mr. Misham to forge that evidence so you could win, but then when you were dismissed as Zach Grammarier's attorney, you used your forged evidence as a trap. You fed me information about the forgery you made. Then you gave your dirty evidence to him. You're free to imagine what you will. My point is that all I had imagined came to pass. Everything went perfectly. Incredible. If I wasn't laughing, I'd weep. Perfectly. You're mad, Kristoff! Stop fooling yourself. What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did that trial end? It canceled when the defendant vanished. I get it. So, Kristoff, you've been living in fear for seven years. You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation trashed. You couldn't leave things to chance, so you watched everyone involved with the case for seven years. Spark Brushel felt like he was being watched. Ah, uh, yeah. Zach Grammarier, gone missing for seven years. Trucy's father. Allow me to refresh the court's memory. Six months ago, Christoph Gavin was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. Shady Smith, poisoned in a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. That's not remotely close. What matters is the traveler was Zach Grammarier. It all started seven years ago. The greatest magician, Magnifique Grammarier's death. Magnifique's death and his student, Zach Grammarier, the suspect. Whoever defended Zach in court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Thinking that, Christoph Gavin did the unthinkable. He forged evidence. It was his daughter, Vera, who really did the work. You took precautions when you had that forgery made, didn't you, Mr. Gavin? to keep people from talking, of course. That's when you planned your poisoning of the forgers, Atraquina, applied to a commemorative stamp. But luck was on Mr. Misham's side. The bomb didn't go off. His daughter saved him by taking the stamp. But that wasn't the only bomb he set up. The nail polish, of course. You noticed something when you requested that forgery. When Vera Misham is nervous, she has a habit of biting her nails. That nail polish was her good luck charm. She was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been... She refuses to leave the house. his insurance. As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. But what if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous, bite her nails, and fucking die. That's actually kind of clever. If you're finished, may I return to my cell? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. Mr. Gavin, have you heard a single thing we've said? Oh, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. Clavier, surely you understand. We're back to the evidence. The lacking evidence. Nothing proves a link between him and the atroquinine that took through Misham's life. What about the bottle? 
The restaurant! You killed Zach Grammer, yay! I killed no man of that name. Read over the report again, if you like. The victim was a traveler by the name of Shady Smith, about whom we know little else. You can't seriously think I knew he was a particular fugitive. Yes, I can. Why did you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Remember, this court did not convene to put me on trial. The defendant's name is Vera Misham, sp suspected in the murder of her father. My trial's been finished for six months now. Jesus. As long as there is no evidence to support the accusation against him, this course of inquiry cannot find Vera Misham in innocent. Your Honor, Phoenix Wright spent seven years collecting this evidence. You still don't get it, do you? Let us assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing Vera Misham to bite her nails? It wasn't me, I know that much. The one who brought that poison to her lips was you. Well, I mean, that's hardly fair. Your Honor, come on! What? This is the first jury trial. The current judicial system has been deemed too closed off from society. This new system attempts to inject the wisdom of common citizens into the law. Common citizens? Wisdom? Is this some kind of a joke? What could we possibly gain by doing this? Entrusting our judicial system to a mindless, emotional mob of irrational mouth breathers? True. Common citizens have something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted by the law. Nonsense. There is only room for two in this court. Me and the law. Keep the riffraff out. Uh... They're not in the court, actually. They're watching everything by video camera. Incidentally, the one responsible for making this happen... ...was Phoenix Wright. So, everything was leading to this, of course, right. 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 <laughs> Holy shit! Holy fuck. I won't accept. This is no court. Law! The law is everything! You'd let ignorant swine soil your courts? Kristoff, it's over. The law is absolute? You can't be serious. Odd. I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. The law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. The law is the end product of many years of history, the fruit of human knowledge, like a gem polished to glean through trials and errors. It is this fruit we receive and pass on and face in our time, and it is always changing, growing, nurturing it as our task as human beings. Except for you, Kristoff. You aren't changing. You've stopped. You're not needed anymore. Jesus Christ. I see no need to further prolong this trial. This began as the trial of Vera Misham accused of murdering her father. Painter Drew Misham, however, several other incidents were reviewed and we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, I await your decision, Joris of the court. The death of Drew Misham, how do you find the defendant Vera Misham? Innocent or guilty? I turn now for you to consider this matter. Oh.
That was weird. Oh, this is this is me. <laughs> Holy shit! Lemmy Roar was her mom the whole time? Holy fuck! <laughs> oh my god! The first verdict under the jury's system. Innocent by unanimous decision. The record will show... When the ver verdict was announced, special witness Christoph Gavin laughed. A laugh louder than any ever heard before or since. A laugh that echoed in the halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. Jesus Christ. Oh, thank God. I mean, it was really old poison, and she probably only ingested a little, and it was diluted in the fucking... Oh, hold up. Vera, I'm so glad I... Don't cry, Apollo. I'm happy too. And proud. You did well, Apollo. When I thought about... What if Vera... I... Hey now, don't you start crying too. Uh, sorry you had to see us like this. What? Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. No? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry that I pressed you. No, no. I was wrong. Staying locked inside like that, clinging to my good luck charm. When I opened my eyes and saw you, I finally understood. It's important to be a part of the world. Oh. Oh. No, 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 it's it's not like that. No, it's okay. I'm through looking away from the things I've done. I hope I can look him in the eyes again someday and apologize. Great. He brought all those things from me when he came to visit earlier. You mean the stack of videos? <laughs> the Steel Samurais? I knew my real daddy was alive. I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. 
It was Mr. Hat. We may not meet again for some time, Trucy, but know this, I will be watching, and one day I shall return. You're the next Grand Marier, after all. Seems like there's a lot of loose ends here. Oh yeah, I have no idea. He had to meet someone. Maybe it's a new mommy. I it kind of is. Trucy? I was wondering, could you show him to me once more? Yes! It's Mr. Hat. <laughs> Oh, here's Phoenix. So your memories returned. Mr. Wright, was this all a part of your plan too? I don't know what you're talking about. When I lost my memory, I was reborn as Lammy Roar. You knew my true identity, did you not? That is why you chose me as one of your jurists. Ah, you're thinking into it too much. Besides, there was no guarantee that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course it is a happy thing. For so long, I thought I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. No, I think they probably should know. Oh. They're very important to me, too. A little annoying at times, but still. Your bracelet. I've seen a lot of mysterious things these past seven years, but your bracelets were the strangest of all. I remember meeting him half a year ago now in Gavin's office. And then I met you, two fates destined to intertwine, and I was there when they crossed. I'll never forget that. Such a small thing, that bullet. Yet it tore who I was away. Oh, that's why she has memory issues. During a simple rehearsal, it was a miracle no one died. But I didn't survive the incident. That's why I left the troop, my family. Now my memory has returned. I am myself once more. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mr. Wright. Speaking of miracles, Vera Misham regained consciousness this morning. I can only hope she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, fate. Sometimes a life is taken, sometimes a life is spared. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really. As long as they've got something worth living for. <laughs> and that's pretty much the end of my story. <laughs> I've still got a long way to go, and this power of mine, it needs some work. But there's hope now. We'd lost it, but somehow we'd found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. Oh. Cords of steel, let's go. Objection! It does sound, it does sound better. That was so good! Volant. I feel so bad for that guy. <laughs> Not every day you get to try the rocks harder than one of our gigs, yeah? That's why it's over! The Gaviners are breaking up! <laughs> the news caused a run of tissues at supermarkets nationwide. You're the real stars now. I look forward to our next jam session. I hope I never see this guy again. You are nothing but trouble.
Well, it's finally over. You know, thinking about it, I've been a piano player longer than I was a lawyer. Now that everything's sorted and I've got time on my hands, maybe I'll take some lessons. Or maybe I'll take the bar exam again. I don't think that's how that works. If you get disbarred, you just take it again. Let's go. It is how it works. Okay, sure. Well, Phoenix is in some of the uh, the later games, right? So I was standing around eating snack who's the other day when I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden? You could augment the crunch or make them ding. Ah, the power of science. That's that's the end of Emma's arc. Is she thinks of a better snack who? Honestly, epic. Everyone in the Ace Attorney games is so pretty, but Emma is truly just not fuckable. She is just a weirdo. Why are we getting the Olga follow-up? Oh, man. I do not care about this character. Emma is a child? She is not. She's 23 in this game? Oh, I miss Plum. Plum was great. So, uh, Kataki Pastries is getting back to its eastern roots, spread the culture and all. Yo, boss, culture time! This is how we write root. Capiche. I love that his name is Big Wins. Yo, boss, PR time! <laughs> uh, not that Walkie's paying any attention. Oh, kids. Can we talk to Walkie? I really want to talk to Walkie. Yes. Bizoy! Man, you want to make it today? You got to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? That's why I made the OG Cracker! Yes! <laughs> Holy sh- That's the funniest joke in the whole series. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Noodleman. There's only one food, and that's noodles. Noodles forever. I got a new one, too. This time I just put a big chunk of salt in the bowl. Why pretend? Eldoon's noodles is about the salt. Oh, it's the best character. My exceptionally inquisitive nature has won me unequivocal adoration in my department. You see, they used to call me Wesley Stinkler and Wesley Sticky Hands. But no longer. I have a new name, one that reflects my true academic nature. Wesley Sicko reporting. He went sicko mode! Curiosity is a sickness and I am the cure. That's kind of true. That guy rocked. Give me some, uh, some case four people. Oh, I guess that is Lemmy Roar. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. I will think of them when I write my next song. Would you go talk to him? Brush up, brush up, brush here. Brushel here, back on the beat with another interview. 
Huh? How do I feel about how things turned out? Uh, no scoop yet, but journalist's confidence in mint condition. And quote. Man, he just, he ended up all right. I didn't hate Brushel by the end of this. Aw, I've decided to keep painting. Originals only, of course. I suppose I'll have to see a bit of the world outside to find out what to paint. But I know there are good people out there now. I've met them. So why were there... We never found out... Why our cases were the sketches under the canvas. Why did we never find that out? Aww. Because Drew Mission was a fan of Apollo. Why? Because it looks cool. Oh, to keep an eye on the talent agency. Okay. I guess that's it. Seems like there was a lot there that wasn't resolved, especially about the troop grammar yay. Like, what happened to Valen? You know, what happened to the big, the big magic show? That was like the very start of this one. <sighs> hmm. Well, I'm sure they'll resolve it later. That was fun. That was fun. Well, that's the end of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. I got to tell you, I was expecting the last day to be more climactic. Everyone, everything just sort of fell into place. By the time we got into court, everything was already decided. We made like four decisions total. Huh. Well... See you later. <laughs>